do Welcome to the Tuesday Q&A show, stroke lockdown show, stroke everything, stroke somebody's not here yet, I'm sure he will be <laughs> shortly, show. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another week at Flory Models. Obviously all this week we'll be doing various lockdown shows as we make our way through on top of what we normally do anyway. So you sort of got today's Q&A show with me as I always do on a Tuesday and then obviously we'll then roll it over into the sort of lockdown show this afternoon if you've got any questions usual bits and pieces members if you can post them up into the actual flory one uh on the forum uh into my section as well that just makes things a lot easier to do and uh that's it and then obviously we are live on the old uh, youtube as well and obviously in the uh flory chat room so yes unfortunately he will be here shortly you know what's going to happen is he's going to suddenly chirp up out of nowhere yeah, isn't he? Um... at the moment he's driving so, uh, but I'm sure he'll be along very, very soon as we go through. But good afternoon. We trust you all had a good weekend. Did you have a good weekend, Andy, or were you working? Uh, no, I, was, I had a good weekend. Um, do you know, I don't know what I did. Didn't do anything. <laughs> You're doing tracks by the looks of it. <laughs> do you, yeah, well, yeah, I was doing my tracks, yeah. So I was doing my uh, tracks for my Tammy and Matilda. There we go. Um, well, yeah. True oh, uh, working tracks. They don't fall apart tracks. when you pick them up like other manufacturers. And they say workable moving tracks. You don't pick them up because they fall apart. Yeah, they're, 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 they're quite good, actually. They say took a lot of cleaning up because, you know, obviously taking them off the sprue. But I used my uh, goddamn nippers to yeah, tidy them up. As, yeah, to get them as well as I could. And then, obviously, a trusty um, floor sanding stick get a to clean stick them up. But, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No. So how, how many hours do you reckon it took you to do the tracks? Uh, probably, I don't know, probably about eight hours, I'd say. Yeah, see? I think In what total. you can do with that eight hours. <laughs> yeah, but like I said, it, it's sort of like if you did an aircraft, you got to spend that time filling seams and sort of like, you know, whatever you So it's just one of those jobs of armour, isn't it? You know, it's, it's the slow job on armor and get I've out always, of the i've always said it's that thing isn't it it's say like with armor you've got tracks and road wheels you know, yeah because normally they're the areas you need to clean up because of seams and obviously things like that but it's very true what you were saying because in the hours you spent doing that is what you haven't spent sanding and finishing uh and rescribing re-riveting and all those yeah. other things you might do on an aircraft so it's yeah. very much that thing and i think that's why sometimes you get guys who are very much armor led because they hate the idea of actually doing, you know, obviously seams, making them seamless, and then obviously re-riveting, re-scribing, and retooling areas and things like that. Whereas obviously aircraft guys would think, I am not messing around doing 92 per side or whatever they are, tracks. Yeah. And in some cases, let's face it, some of the manufacturers out there, I think there was one we looked at where there was, I think it was seven parts per track, 92 on each side. I yeah. can't remember what piece of armour it was and what even manufacturer it was now. I don't know if somebody live chat will know. But, yeah, that, I think that was my record of, like, my God, why would you want to do it? You have to yeah. put the guide ones in as well and then, obviously, the pads, the tracks and everything, and then you have the bolt system, and it's 92 each side. And it was like, yeah. Jesus, aftermarket, <laughs> that's the future. <laughs> yeah, these weren't too bad. It's just uh, two, per, two parts per link. Mm. It was uh, 69 per side, so... Yeah, they're not yeah, not too bad, but yeah, sort of it'd be nice when they're on. Mm. Not that you'll see them, of course. Oh, you'll see them not on a Matilda, no, because it's got all the side and yeah, yes. yeah, all the mud mud deflector things on it. So yeah, you can't see them. So yeah, be no. fun. No. Oh well, lots of fun. But there we go. So anyway, let us know in your comments what what are you? Would you ever tackle doing? tracks that are seven parts each by 92 or would you think stuff this i'll spend 25 quid on an aftermarket set i know what i'd do <laughs> nigel nigel says give me sanding and rescribing any day yeah 
I think, though, obviously it's that thing because I've said about it and I've done various ones in the past. And it is, I think, if you put a little bit of music on or something you don't have to watch. So I'm a great thing about when I'm doing working on stuff like that. I'll put a film on that I know so well I can listen to it without looking at it because yeah. I know what it is. And then that way you can literally just get on and do them. And many a times I've said, like, you know, when I've done the build, I've said about breaking it down, perhaps just do 10 or 12 links per session. And then over the course of the build, you'll have it done. But actually, when you get on a roll with it, you know, and you get going, it doesn't take that long. I know with some of them where you've got, a, you know, you're sort of molding them around there, right, ball like I prefer workable like that. But many, many times you see companies, they'll say workable tracks, and they're yeah. only held on one side. And if you try and pick them up, they fall apart. Because to be honest with you, when we came on air, Andy held them up to show me. And I said to him, oh, aftermarket, because they looked really good. They've got a proper, they look weighted as well. Whereas obviously it just shows how well they are working. Because sometimes you get workable tracks and they've got like dog legs in there where they're not yeah. proper, yeah. you know, you've got a little bit of flash between them and stuff and they yeah. don't work that well. But uh, yes. Like Andy says, uh, building tracks is th therapeutic. I, I, I find them quite therapeutic. The cleaning up was a bit of a... Hmm. Or eight, but yeah, you know, once you get past that bit, and yeah, I don't mind doing it. This is where, though, 70 quid's worth of God Hand Snippers comes in because yeah. they get so close, it's hardly any cleanup. Yeah. And I must admit, that's when I get mine out as well because you can get so close, you don't really need to come in with a sander almost afterwards. It's very thin. If you've got like a cheap pair, you know you're going to have to get in there either with a knife or with a sander and clean up each one to make them perfect. But a good pair of cutters that was almost got zero flash left or a little bit stick it out, then that really yeah. does help. So, the, the way I do it is I just get a piece of uh, Tamiya tape mm -hmm. stuck, on my de stuck on my desk upside down, lay a row of, say, 10 tracks out on the Tamiya tape so they can't move anywhere, and then yeah. round with me with the bits to join them together and mm. carefully join them, glue them together, leave them 10 minutes so that they're um, semi-set, and then sort of take them off, and then sort of like just... Give them a bit of movement just so, just to make sure if there has any glue got between the working parts, it's all like, you know, it's like freezing back up again so that, you know, mm. if you stay, you know, because obviously if you left it, it would just got completely solid. So just to make sure that there's, try to be careful with it anyway, that there isn't mm. any glue there. But if there is, just make sure that, you know, you work them a little bit and it's like, you know, dry, movable. And just remember, don't go too mad with your weathering with enamel fillers. I know, I'm not going to this time. <laughs> <laughs> After last time. <laughs> they just fall apart, otherwise it really will be criminal. Uh, yeah. One thing I do have to mention, thank you very much to uh, Buck Dean, who sent me a Christmas card, which actually arrived yesterday. It did make it here. So thank you very much, and thank you for your nice little message in there as well. So uh, very nice indeed, and a very nice picture. Look at that. So anyway, Christmas cards, or is that 2021 Christmas <laughs> and he's just getting in early. But he did send it. Looking at the postmark, it was sent on the 21st of December. So I think that's quite quick. So definitely, I'll put him there for the show uh, as he goes through. But yes, thank you very much for getting that one here. Uh, for me, to be honest with you, as you can see, the Black Wonder, which is mocked up again, it's literally just car, uh, is together. So if I take it apart, that way it won't, because at the moment it does do a bit like this. Um, so if we stick that off, as you can see, I've literally just been around with this one and we've given it a coat of gloss black, purely because it needs to light fast. The plastic is so thin on this that actually when I was messing around and we were painting it, I was originally only going to give it one coat and then I held this up to the light, which you sort of can still see it now. It's patchy as hell because the plastic is very, very thin. Uh, and because I want it to be a nice solid looking lump at the end of the day, um, we've gone in there. But also it's quite good because it will enable us to find the windows very well, which if I switch cameras, you can see hopefully what I'm getting at with this one. So you can see, we can see the windows really easily. So that's the point when I come in with pens and stuff afterwards, the windows all still work. So it's not like you've just covered them and you never see them again. So that's why we've ended up doing it that way. The rest of it's all just masked around in here for the engines and the whatnot. But again, we haven't gone wild underneath here because of the clear parts. But yes, somewhat coming together. So hopefully, plan of action really for me tomorrow is to start getting the proper colour on. So we're going to go in there with my usual, what I call sci-fi white, uh, which is just white and buff mix. Uh, we'll go along with that one, get the basics of get it down, get this covered over. Scene check it, make sure we're all happy that we've got any lines coming through or anything else uh, and stuff like that. Once we're happy with that one, then obviously we'll go through with a proper coat of paint and then 
going to be masking it, isn't it? But yep. Aztec pattern, fun, games, and all the rest of it. But generally, very, very nice. Coming together very, very quickly on that one. So uh, we're looking forward to actually getting this thing into paint and detailing it. Should be a lot of fun because one thing did turn up, which I've had on order for a while, and they did arrive this week, was this, which I put them all in here loose. But as you know, I'm quite a fan of the old um, Posca pens. So I bought a job lot off the internet, and they're all new and they're all sealed. But it's got all the colours, and this particular blue is exactly the right colour blue because I've tested it on these bits. You can see it just in here yeah. and down in yeah. here. But it's the perfect blue for the colours. And this blue in here, there's a purpley blue in here, uh, is one of them, is this one. So both of them are actually the colours that I need for doing the detail work on it. So that is the plan with that one. But I've tested it on this one with this sort of blue, which is that over the box. Bond somewhere. Oh, the box. Uh, so yes, so that's the plan. So it's coming on very, very nicely. But the big thing will be obviously all about the paintwork on this one. But yes, like me poster pens, as you know, can't go wrong with those. Can I just say thank you to Michael Diaz on behalf of the team for he sent us a um, a parcel over at which we arrived yesterday um, of some goodies over from America. Phil's not got his. We're going to send them over when we send his care package over. His and John's, but Presence. yes, Presence. thank you, very, thank you very much. Very, thank you very much, and I don't even know what it is. So we're okay. <laughs> It'll be a surprise for me. Speaking of surprises, I might have to dash out in around about, hopefully, about an hour's time. So I've got something coming today, um, which I know the PM store's got coming as well. But I've I've, I've gotten well from the same place. It's just they've done this. So, but we'll keep that one a secret till it does turn up. So I'm quite excited. I'm, I'm going to do the review of it overnight, and then it'll be up tomorrow. So I was going to uh, say, what is it? But I do know. So. You do know. Yeah. So that's in. So, um, and also, we just have to say, we have got coming in now the Harriers, isn't it, Andy? Yes, they are ordered. We're waiting for them to be dispatched. So, we only waited, what, a year? <laughs> a year? Yes, yeah, so waiting a couple of days for them to be dispatched isn't uh, <laughs> yes. too bad, isn't it? It's only a few, actually. So, this is the uh, Kinetic 48 scale uh, Harriers. Um, so, it is the AV8A. And the GR3, 13. Yeah, GR13, yeah. GR yeah. Um, so those ones. So obviously everybody's done the pre-orders for those. Obviously they'll be winging their way as we speak. And then obviously the pre-orders for the uh, F15s we were speaking all about All of before. the UK F15s have all gone out. Um, we're just pricing up the American ones. I was talking to Phil before we came on. Um, Postage at the moment is ridiculous. Right, I'll consult Matt because he's not here. And seeing as he's not here, I, I can talk about him badly behind his back. I will say it is looking like, we were saying it's about 70 odd quid, isn't it, Andy? Yeah, we're trying to get it a bit cheaper. We're trying to go a bit cheaper, but honestly, if we can't get it to a reasonable price, obviously I think we will allow people to pull out of it. Because, again, when we originally, oh, it's my fault, wouldn't it? I fancied one. And I was like, can we get one? No. Why? It was like the only way we can get it if we have a carton full. So it was like yeah. anybody else about to one, and that's actually how pre-orders started back in the day. Shows how long we yeah. take to turn up. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so but obviously back then it was pre-COVID, so consequently postage wasn't a problem. But as we know, postage costs have actually just gone through the roof. And to be honest, it's not a small box; it's a big kit anyway. It's but kit. Um, obviously, if you're feeling that's a bit, you know, I you can get it a lot cheaper back in the states, things like that then obviously we will allow people to sort of pull out of that one because we didn't know what the postage was going to do and all the rest of it. So we'll go from that. Matt, yeah. Matt probably listening to us in the car going, no, you can't. <laughs> it's hard off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the UK ones have all gone out. Um, you should have tracking numbers um, either through Messenger on the forum or some of them have gone through um, via email, but everyone should have tracking numbers for them. Also, um, sent out the there's a few more of the auction bits to the foreign lands to sort out which we're going to do tomorrow morning mm -hmm. uh i've all invoiced the rifle models panzer threes today mm -hmm. we've also got coming in imminently the icm tiger moths and the two geo harriers so yeah, lot, yeah, as always, lots of buses. Yeah, it's just everything's just arrived all in one go. So it all turns up together. I do apologise. Yes, unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do about that one. No. So, anyway, uh, just some shout-outs for people in there. Neil, 
Uh, am I stroking a lot today? Am I? You are. <laughs> I don't know. Am I having a stroke? I've not as far as well. I can't smell burnt toast or anything. <laughs> uh hello everybody another mad day in the madhouse absolutely hi phil uh does revels view fighter uh count for the c6 sig as long as it's doing the navy roll i.e put a um torpedo on it then yes obviously it would so and i think that kit does come with the torpedo doesn't it i'm right well the tf does not it isn't tf yeah, yeah there's a uh, different count. yeah whichever one is the naval maritime one with the torpedo yeah. and all the rest of it, then yes, absolutely. If it's in an anti-shipping role, uh, then you can have that for the C66. That's not a problem. Uh, 76, Addy. Good afternoon. Early finish from work, so we catch the live show. Fantastic. Good morning, gents. There you go. Look, midnight modelling, obviously, different side of the world. Uh, thanks for keeping us going through its critical time. Absolutely. Remember, everyone, stay at home. For God's sake. I'm not being funny with that. <laughs> yes. Just seem very busy out and about still. I don't know why. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, from bored at work, <laughs> trying to maintain social distancing. Oh, nice. Uh, hi there. Does anyone know if anyone will be making a 132nd scale MiG-25 or MiG-31? Right, so that would be a big jet, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it just? That would be huge. There was rumour about a MiG-25 the other day, wasn't it? Who was on about that? I got a feeling there was somebody second-guessing, a not a massively well-known company that was supposed to be doing a 32nd MiG-25. But... Was that the resin? company that does the resin stuff? Maybe. The organic... did... Yeah, I did see on somewhere that they were on about it, but where I saw that, I might have dreamt it, probably. Uh, but there was, because I did think at the time, Jesus, that'd be huge. You know, it's bad enough sort of flankers and stuff like that. They're monsters, but yeah. Um, Gordon's in, cold and sunny Ayrshire. Very nice. Uh, 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 right, if I skip through some of these tracks, scare me, scare the hell out of me. Hi, Phil from Bolton IPMS. Uh, it would have been our show this Sunday. If it's yes, I've got, you know what? Think how quickly the year went past Bolt Show this weekend. It would have been, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Remember it well. Were you there last year? We were, weren't we? Yeah, we were. Before yeah, the lockdown, the, wasn't it? Because that's, we that's the bit where Matt turned up late. Well, like, we met, we went, we stayed in the in hotel the brand. We? Yeah. And Matt didn't come until the following morning, did he? That was it. He skyped yeah. that setting up. Yeah, you mean, yeah, you mean yeah. we stopped at the, yeah. The yeah, it was the Bolton Wanderers football ground, yeah. That's quite nice, that was. It was very nice in there. Uh, so, yes, um, again, it's a bit, to be honest, it's somewhat of a cock up on our part. Originally, we were planning on holding a uh, virtual model show to coincide with it, because what we were going to do originally, when we discussed this and we sorted out everything, clearly we forgot. Uh, because last year we said what we'll do is obviously because there's going to be no Bolton show there'll be no Milton Keynes show and all the rest of it um, so we were going to do shows at the weekend like we did last time for Telford so we'll do like making and demoing and set things out during the day as we go through but it was pointed out to me by Matt I think yesterday or the day before you do realise it's this weekend <laughs> so we haven't got time to do it so the plan of action is it won't be this weekend it'll be next weekend we're going to do a virtual model show weekend uh, so think if you didn't see the ones, if you think back to the ones when we did it for Telford, it'll literally be like that. So PM needs to get on board. Obviously, we're doing show specials. Uh, obviously, flooring model stuff will be on special as well and everything we do. And then it will coincide with us doing demos and live stuff and stuff like that over the weekend. It's just literally this year, because we've been farting around with Brexit things and postage and all those types of things, it's gone out the window. So we've been busy trying to sort everything out and forgot about doing the show. And there will be a quiz as well because our quiz master is yes, doing Yes, our quiz, quiz master will be obviously doing that as well. So, yes. All I can say is it. swat upon the Mary Rose because he says. Yeah, this will be it now, wouldn't it? Because you know he's been doing his own work <laughs> on it. Uh, but anyway, uh, sad times that obviously there's no show at the Bolton Ground. We really do enjoy doing that one. It's very nice, yeah. I must admit. It's a nice one. It's a nice venue. It's got fantastic parking. Although last year, that's when we turned up. So, me and my other <laughs> half turned up. Andy's on the phone to me saying, don't come this way as it's too late. Because as we were trying to drive in, everyone was leaving the football ground after the match. So it's literally like you're the only car going that way. Yeah. And I want to go there and everybody's coming towards you. You're like a salmon going upstream. 
So yes, that was fun and games trying to get in there, and eventually we managed to uh, sort of squirrel our way in and get there uh, for the setup. It was even worse for me because I was in a great big transit van. That's it. You were trying, <laughs> trying to find somewhere to park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was a bit chaotic doing that yeah. one. And then we thought it would we be out the right weekend because we got there and no one was there, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. You're yeah looking yeah. through like the window and it's just nothing's there. And it's like, oh, Jesus. Don't tell yeah. me I've driven halfway across the country and it's not on. The anyway. car park center, the car park in car park, the car park center wants to know where I was going. I says, in there. Yeah. He says, where are you going to park? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll park it on the on the end of a row. Which, yes, yeah. stick it on the end. Oh well, yeah. that might. But anyway, hopefully next year be back to normal. Yeah, good times. We'll be moving on again. Uh, just found out the issue with the Procon airbrushes. Spare part cost. Uh, they may look like I water compatible, but they are not. A new nozzle costs twenty five US dollars. Out. Sure, they're not that expensive over here. No, they're not. I'm sure they're not. Because I know Matt had, he got some um, spares and that for his. Yeah. He had a new nozzle and needle and all the rest of it. Trust me, he, he's a northerner. If it was expensive, he would tell you. Yeah. He would know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He'd have thrown it away rather than... Hmm. So, yes, never mind. Uh, raw mail seems to be sorting itself out. I just ordered on the 8th and it arrived on the 11th. I must admit, <sighs> in, in the UK, it does seem to be getting a little bit better because I've ordered some stuff. It's been next day. Don't count your chickens. But yeah, because sod's law. On, on the news, mm. they've been t saying today that I think it's 25 postal areas with the Royal Mail mm. are, aren't delivering daily because staff are coming down with COVID or they're isolating. Yeah. Uh, it's going to get worse. So... Yeah, it seems to be kicking off a bit again. The postage may be a bit slow, so apologies if parcels are slow. Again, like we're saying, it, you know, we we've, we've had lots of talk about postage and stuff like that, and obviously the thing with Christmas before and everything else, and obviously for people who aren't in the UK, it's pretty bad over here at the moment. It's yeah, it's not good. Uh, so uh, again, things can change literally on a heartbeat. That's the trouble. Uh, greetings from Serbia. Um, I'm close to priming my FGR2 148 scale. Uh, are there any mistakes with the kit that I should look up? Uh, should I do the camo decals from Ravel? Thanks in advance. To be honest with you, that kit is actually very nice. It's the Hasegawa kit of old, and it is the only FGR out there, uh, one or two version. Um, to be honest, you can't fault the kit. I always say it's it's typical old school Hasegawa. It's their golden age. It's a '90s kit, so you've got all the recess detail, all the details there. It's not as you know nicely done, shall we say, or as in depth and as detailed as a modern kit. Uh, but obviously, those kits are now 30 years old, so they are just showing their age. But as for assembly and all the rest of it, with all phantoms of the Hasegawa family, it's the two things: intakes, okay, so dry fitting, test fitting, shave little bits off and sand them just to make sure that they go in pretty seamless, okay. That's always going to be your bugbear with phantoms. And then, of course, the other thing is, is because it's a one-piece wing system that fits at the bottom, the front and rear joints. Just make sure that they're in. But again, sometimes I just shim it with a little bit of plastic. So. so it's just the Rebel boxing he's doing, isn't it? So the decals are from Rebel. Thanks for the advice. Yes. Sorry. No we, hold on, Andy. We might have buffer a second there because it just said we were off air, but it's come back. Well, um, anybody in live chat still see us? Just say we're I've, still on. I've got this on my other monitor and I didn't notice it go off. Oh, right. I just had a thing that said you're currently offline and then it's come back and said it's back on. So that's right. I think perhaps we're okay. I just thought it had like killed us. Yeah, I've got I've got a couple of those um, Rebel ones in kits in my stash because hmm. they were too good to let go at the price they were going at at one time. Yeah, I must admit it, uh, it, it. It's a to be honest, considering its age and all the rest of it, it's very very nice. You can get a load of aftermarket for it. You can get cockpits for it. You can get wheels for it. You can get the nozzles for it. Um, all your color photo etching, the various bits and pieces. So yes. Somebody asking you for your light and what it's called. Yeah, I'm trying to see what it was called. <laughs> what, what make it is. Uh, who makes it? One of ours is saying Seriously? here, he's just paid £17.50 for the Procon nozzle and £9 for the needle. 
that's what I thought it was, but so yes. No interruption on YouTube. It's amazing. I just had a thing on my other computer that came up and said you're now off air with a big cloud with a line through it and everything, but clearly we still are. So that's clever. Well on YouTube. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. My lamp is by Lightcraft and it's a three tube uh, UV, uh, UV, not UV, um, LED, uh, LED. Not, not LED, the tube things. Oh, right. Daylight but they do do one. LED ones now, and if I was to do get one, I'd probably go with the LED. Um, I think there's something wrong with mine because when I have my overhead camera on, with that on, it flickers, and it never used to do before. As though it's like, yeah, the Hertz Rad sync, but yeah. I've messed around with it on the cameras and either 50, 50 or 60 Hertz, and neither of them seem to make any difference. So I must admit, yeah. I haven't used one for a while. If you go back through the history of it, I used to have mine here as well before I put those two on. And uh, the bug bear with mine was for years, I couldn't work out what this high pitched buzz was. Like, mm. uh, I couldn't hear it on camera, but I'd hear it and I'd be like bashing it because I thought it was like the springs, perhaps, yeah. you know, resonating. And it was that. Turns out I found it one day, it was the starter just rattling. Right. It, it was a very high pitch rattle. So I put a little bit of yeah. white tack literally and squashed it onto it, cured it. But for like two years, it's driven me mad. It was like you had an insect inside it, like, and that's what it was. It was the starter motor was just rattling slightly on it. Doesn't really make much noise, hmm. but I say you can't see it on that camera with enough on the remote cameras. Let me just uh, quickly flick over to one. Let just it's... your hertz from sixty. Yeah, I've done that. See, that's no, all right. right today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before we came on, I was messing around with it, and it was yeah, going mad. Yeah, fine now. So who knows? Who knows? Uh, guys who are saying if you actually tried to fit Iowata nozzle to a pro con it, I haven't. I must admit, I, d I don't know. Never tried that. Uh, Tom Moore says Posca pens or Posca pens, whichever you want to pronounce them. I've been recommending them for ages. Uh, great uh, for window blackouts, one twenty four scars. I must admit, I use them for years and years as well. Um, go back to lots of them if you don't know what they are they're literally acrylic paint pens uh they come in different nozzles uh sizes you get like a felt tip type one or these are the normal sort of ballpoint pen ones but they're great because you can just flood an area and you can literally use it like a, a an acrylic paint and they are acrylic as well so they will go over anything and that's the thing if the reason i got into them is that i saw a video and it was a guy doing it on glass work and on fabric and i thought if it works on that it must work on plastic so, but they're like the Sharpies of the world, but they go in every single color you can do it. And originally I set out and I just had the metallics. So I had like the silvers, the golds and the coppers and all the rest of it. But now I've got all the colors because to be honest, they were on offer on Amazon. They did have a picture of a nice display case with them. When they turned up, they just turned up in a jiffy bag loose. So who, uh, that's why they were cheap, clearly. Tom says a uh, raw mail or a nightmare here and they messed up the J52 delivery that went back to Andy. We will get that back to you, Tom, I promise you. Um, I just know you've got some other bits and bobs that we'll send off at the same time. Um, yeah, ugh, don't understand. That, well, that one, I don't think ever actually right, went to where he, where he lives, oh, right. where, sorry, where he works. Mm -hmm. I don't think ever got there. And we've also had another one that by the looks of it, it's gone from Doncaster to Birmingham. And from Birmingham straight back to us, but we haven't had it back yet. Oh, right. It's in the that, was two, that was two weeks ago. Nice. Okay. Well, as you it's say, as soon as they bounce people. back, we'll sort them out. Yeah. Uh, apparently, the nozzle fits the body, but doesn't fit the air cap. So you can't put an iWater nozzle into the Procon airbrushes because there's a different size. Apparently, it's just a little bit bigger than the iWater one. Right, so there we go. Also, don't try it. I'm a great believer in use the part that is recommended for your airbrush. I know some people I've seen literally have cut needles down to fit in the, and it's like, why are you messing around with all of that? Use the right one for it. Because all you're going to be doing as well is that the tolerances, you know, with an airbrush, they are incredibly tight because it's atomizing paint. So if you're like, you know, forcing things to go in, it's not going to end very well. You might as well just spend an extra couple of quid and get the genuine part and you know it's going to be fine then. All you're going to do is wreck your nozzle or your, you know, some other part of your actual airbrush. Uh, I see HK models have announced an all new B17F in 148. 
cool. they, did, they did a while ago, didn't they? So to complete their forty eighth family of B seven. Oh yeah, actually the F we have we had as a pre order, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we got it as a pre order on the thing. So yes. I think it's finished now as a pre order because I think we took it off, but it's yeah. so we'll wait for them to come in. But yes, they're yeah. not coming in. So if you do want your sort of Memphis Bell type, the glass front, as I say, yeah. I've got the G up there. Uh, I think the Memphis Bell is one of the decor sheets that comes with it as well, to be honest with you. The cashing in. Uh, yeah. dr, 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 uh, uh, great, you've got the Boo Fire. Uh, oh, sorry, the Boo Fire on special. There you go, sold. <laughs> uh, the stroking comment was a comment about Phil's lockdown Q and A's show, wherever this is. No, I'm still lost. Neil, you've lost me on that one. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Andy, uh, for my crep van, which arrived today. No problem, Alan. That was a rather battered one, that was. That had the small damage. You know all those ones we say, this is a damaged box and you can't even see what's damaged on it. That one that, was proper was... damage. But yeah. as I say, we did check the parts before, make sure it hadn't been proper crippled, but luckily it missed everything. That was the second worst one we've had, I think, and the worst one is... Phil's F-15. <laughs> is this where mine comes in? It's got like a, half the wings been goofed off. Thanks for that. Uh, the, the kit's fine. It's just the It's box. fine, the box. So this is the bit. When I have it on display in here, then I have to have it a certain direction. So don't look at the other end, is it? As Matt said, Phil can have that one. Oh, thanks. <laughs> mine, mine's, mine's a bit battered as well, to be honest with you. But... All the ones that have gone out to customers are To be all honest, there. it's standard because yeah. I get a lot of people here and like, you know, or used to, I've done it for a year now, but you get people in here and they look at it and they notice that everything's slightly tarnished. And that's because I end up with all the dodgy ones. <laughs> right the way down to the sanders, you know, because <laughs> I use all the dodgy sanders that we can't sell. Because obviously when we do batches of, say, 10,000 of each one, you're always going to get a few that are a bit dodgy for whatever reason or a bit moth-eaten. And I use them. So it's like that thing. Sometimes you look at it and people say, oh, I didn't know you did a short one. Or oh, there you go, it's a classic. Or a bigger, fatter one than the normal skinny. And it's because it's yeah. a dud. It never got properly cut all the way through. So I use it. Oh, look out. Is. Shush, he's here. Hold on, I'm going to have to switch cameras. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to have to adjust you. Hold on. Because you weren't here for adjustment purposes. I'm sorry. <laughs> How was the traffic? Actually, we're quite busy still. There's a lot of people on the road. Yes, that shouldn't be. Yes. You're on your echo mic, Matt. Well, we've got the echo on. Go in the bunny, man. <laughs> right, hold on. There we go. You're in. Crap yourselves oh. in. Sorry, Ted. That's it. Cool. Oh. That's better. Yeah. Uh, Don't take yes. in. So what's happened since I've been gone? Nothing. That's right. <laughs> That's just been that interesting. <laughs> it's We've just been feeling it's fine. Don't anybody tell him. <laughs> yeah, shush everyone. <laughs> he doesn't need to know. <laughs> uh, Stuart says, uh, just got the Zvezda A350 in a big bird in 144 compared to the IL-86 in the same scale. Mind you, the A350 is a big lump, isn't it? Yeah. That is a big old bird, that one. Uh, hi, Phil. Eddard have indicated on their FaceTube page uh, that their web store will reopen from the uh, 1700 hours. Oh, so it's open today. Oh, well, there you go. They're obviously back up to speed. That's good. Nice to see them back again. Um, uh, uh, Ricky feels excited because he has a love honey parcel arriving this afternoon. Almost. <laughs> has it not turned up yet? Uh, it's not due until four. So that's it. Oh, no, well, the it left it's to roll law. It's going to come in literally right as we come off air. Unless it's yeah. early, which I don't think it will be. Because you know what they're like? They sit out the front waiting. They're not allowed to deliver it before it says so. <laughs> uh, Phil, have you got any uh, kit reviews coming soon? Yes, I have, clearly. It's, when it turns out, I'm going to do one overnight and it'll be up with you tomorrow. I'm not going to spoil the surprise of what it is, but it's something that everyone's been after for a bit. 
And then um, obviously we've got some new stuff coming down. I've got a care package coming down to me, so I will get that lot all sorted and reviewed as well. Uh, hopefully the vaccine rollout will be in time for Telford. Phantom intakes. What's this about phantom intakes? Why? What's phantom intakes? I don't know. Just on our chat, you haven't missed anything. Phantom intakes. Is yeah, that's it. This is it. We're oh, discussing like phantom what? intakes. You've had half an hour of talking about phantom intakes. No. Uh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Couple of geeks. <laughs> Which uh, phantom intakes? No, we were just discussing on that one about uh, obviously with the Hasegawa phantoms, what's wrong with them? They were saying intakes can be a little bit, you want to make sure they're good and obviously the lower wing fit. Apart from that, really good. For a 30 year old kit, it's a good one. What are you eating? Sweet. You've been just, just driven all the way back up. <laughs> I've just robbed, uh, I've just nipped over because I've had to drop some off. <laughs> so I've just robbed the sweet draw. Hmm. Or sweet cupboard. Kevin says apparently you use these pens as well for marking queen bees. There you go, you see. Oh, what, sorry? For marking queen bees. So you know which oh. one's the queen. Oh, oh, okay. There you go, you see. Millions of uses. Uh, any options for the best? 148 scale F111 kit. Oh, look, there could be a thing in this one. It's almost like someone's reading my mind on this because that could be <laughs> my 60s entry. Um, so yes, well you could do what I've done. I've just ordered the Hobby Boss one that should be here later, along with some and some other kits. Um, so yes, so that's what I would say. You've got the Academy one, but to be honest, the Hobby Boss one has got all the niceties to it. I know everyone's going to say now that the canopy is the wrong shape and all the rest of it, but if you're going to do it open, it doesn't really matter um, because it, you know the way the angle looks at it, it's fine. But if you did want to go down, you can get an aftermarket canopy for it as well. A lot of people say the canopy shape's wrong. Yeah, uh, are you that bothered? I say I'm not bothered because I'm going to have mine open, so it don't make any difference. But yes. You got seat belts for it? No. Didn't go for all of that. I've got a mask set though. You got a Quinter Studios full. Well, they do one for it. I don't think it's out yet. No, they don't. Just no. Ask <laughs> <laughs> I bet they will do. They're bound to do everything. Fact, uh, no, if they're no, watching this, can you do one literally in about two weeks' time? It'd be handy. Yeah, there wasn't any seatbelts <laughs> on hand, didn't see there was. Uh... Yeah, there, 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 there's a photo etch set that's got all the seatbelts and everything in for it, which is the old Academy one. But yeah. didn't fancy all of that. You're not going to see much of it. You are if the cockpit's open. Yeah, but I can make them myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll do my <laughs> usual trick with it. <laughs> um, would Flory Wash do the same job as Tamiya panel line accent colour? Uh, want it for a car to enhance the car door lines? Yes, basically, apart from obviously mine's water based, so you don't have to worry about it. You just literally, can I, if you're doing it for that type of work, just use it capillary action, use the black one and just whip around the doors and then leave it. Um, but obviously, you know, theirs is basically an enamel wash where obviously mine's clay, so. Forces the courses. There's no good F111. Oh, here we go. Right, scrap that. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> just just to go out and do it. Any fans of 144 in chat? Where's Nathan? Nathan, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I find it far too small. Nathan, Will you say care um, package being delivered in continence pants? Thanks. <laughs> uh, the world is lacking a good 172nd scale alpha jet. That's very true. That is actually. Yeah. yeah. That is very true, yeah. Mm. Would, um, I thought Ming were doing one at one time, weren't they? An alpha jet, I don't know. Mm. Well, sorry, a, a and K, sorry. Oh god. Well. Oh yeah. Yeah. If anybody are doing Alpha Jet, we special love it. Yes. So expect one next year. Now we've said it. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. I think we're up to date. And they're on. That's it. That's cool. Very good. You guys, talking about one four four now. U boats. Yeah, that's a good scale for one four four. Yeah, I think <laughs> the largest stuff like. 
civil jets and some of the Bandai stuff. Yeah, big, the big stuff's good in 144, but not a... Uh, not Spitfire. Yeah, not Spitfire, no. No. Or a 109 like Nathan builds. Yes, that's... Yeah. I was going to say, if you're going to go with the Eddard 144 MiG-21, that's a nice kit. Beautifully detailed. It's Yeah, it's like a mini-me version of the second one, which is like the 148 one. So, yeah, it's like, yeah. I've properly gone through that one. It is a beautiful kit, but too small for me. Uh, right, Tony says, uh, now that we're back to a proper lockdown again, will we be doing more regular shows? No. <laughs> no, definitely haven't been doing them all last week either. Uh, Alan says, hi, I'd like to help with the pronunciation of a particular helicopter that you battled with the other day. You say uh, Ruki Velk, uh, Roy Velk. Yes, it's Red Hawk. I must admit, the thing is, after the show, I did go off and YouTubed it, like you do. Just to right. And I remember seeing it on a, I think I had a DVD or would have been a VHS cassette back then called like, you know, Helicopters or something. And it, I forgot all about that helicopter. It was around from when they were doing the sort of Tiger, the Apache and all those things. It was like that, that sort of breed of helicopter that it came along. So yes. So Ooh. yes. So you say it as Roy Valk, isn't it? If I remember wow. rightly, Roy Valk? Yes. So it's like Roy Hulk, but with an F. So Roy Valk. Is this the South African one you're on about? Yeah. Right, okay. It's the one that looks like a Tiger II helicopter, but yeah, on yeah, steroids. It's just a bit bigger and beefier, but the same, same thing. They put the, the millimetre radar thing in the nose, which is wrong place for it. Uh, Carlos says, Hi Phil, will you be posting up the build of the Star Trek Enterprise that you're currently working on? No, clearly. <laughs> Why is everyone, everyone took a week late with the questions? Yes, it's up. It went up yesterday. So that's part one. Part two will go up on Friday. Part three will be fully into the paintwork by then and uh, stuff. So I think part two gets you literally just up before we go into Black Primer. And then obviously next week we'll be going through the, obviously the painting, deckling, stenciling, 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 painting, deckling. So, what is it? Well, you weren't here to see it. He's here. Oh, oh. Is that the stealth, stealth version? This is the black edition. Toilet seat sits on front. It does actually look quite cool in black. I think I think yeah. I'm just going to whiffy it and do it in black. <laughs> what, uh, what, what you use? Is that LP1? Uh, no, that's actually X1 because I've got a box of six of it here. So, oh, right, okay. So I used a whole bottle doing that. So good yeah. to go. Yeah, uh, so yes, we're on that one, Carlos. And then what I'm going to do is obviously I'm going to be into paint that one tomorrow. I've got a bit of time off on Thursday, to be honest. And then obviously back in it at Friday. So it would just be a case of getting that one done. And then next week, we will be starting on that one to follow through. So whilst that one, we'd be waiting for deckling and painting to dry and everything else. We can get on with the uh, Seahawk uh, on that particular build. Let's make our way through with that one. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, Dave says, hi, Phil. Recently, you mentioned uh, what will replace the Flory Girls. Well, we're not replacing them as such when the run ends. What we're talking about is the mugs, because we've only got another two years of mugs with people. So after that, what we can use. I thought uh, caricatures of you and the team. Uh, you have one of yourself already, I know, uh, which is... I don't know, where is that these days? It's on the wall behind you. There it is. Hold on, it's right here. Which is that one. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so we got that one um uh and then you obviously we could have one with all you lot as well my oh, god yes, so you've yes. got and not being funny you can have the girls or us yeah no we're not a competition yeah, but... really is it <laughs> <No>. <laughs> especially caricatures of us that's all you'd need <laughs> isn't it i think we'll stick with the girls <laughs> so uh, if people uh, need to see comrade buller as a postman pansky <laughs> <laughs> Matt and Andy is all Crichton Granville and Nathan is the hood. <laughs> That's it. It might be quite interesting to get someone to do that. If you are a budding artist, let me know. <laughs> Failing yeah. that, I'll get my cousin to do it because she is an artist. So, 
Uh, right, Dale says, uh, I know it's been said many times, but having found you guys last February or March, I'd like to echo the thanks to yourselves and the team for all your efforts throughout last year uh, and ongoing for returning me uh, to an old interest and helping me hold on to my sanity through these difficult times. Absolutely, our pleasure, what we're here for. Uh, anyway, current problem. Uh, and it's a bit of an odd one. I've recently acquired a Tamiya Peugeot 405 T16 kit. You know that one, Matt? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's what the they use for the, uh, they use it for the Paris Dakar rally things. It's a rally car. Oh, right. Was it very good? Yeah, it was for its day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it won quite a few bits. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the kit is moulded in yellow plastic and for my project I need to paint it white. Uh, I've tested Halford's primer uh, and white plastic primers, letting them dry thoroughly uh, on the sprues, but every time the yellow bleeds through uh, the paints leaving the final white coat with a creamy yellow colour. Do you mm -hmm. know of a sealer or barrier that will stop this from happening? Yeah, just a neutral grey one. Yeah. Yeah, just put a grey primer on it and then whether it will wipe. I think you're into that problem like I was having with this. Is this more a case of because perhaps the plastic's quite thin, mm. it's allowing the light to travel through the plastic so it's carrying that yellow through with it, the hue. So that's why I've done this black is because this plastic is quite thin um, and it's quite translucent. So the whole point is if I was just to paint this white, it would still not look like a solid color. This has got nothing to do with black basin before that brigade jump on. Uh, this is purely to actually give it that solid look because light can't travel through it. Uh, so it just gives a more solid uh, looking object. So perhaps that might be a case as well. It's more of the, the, the yellow carrying the color, uh, the light through. Yeah, it depends if you have done both sides of the shell, doesn't it? Mm. inside and out yes so inside what we're suggesting do both sides yeah yeah cool. i'd try that and then obviously you might have to think some else but yeah i think if you like you say if you've done both of it you've eliminated the yellow haven't you because mm -hmm. the original kit came in with the camel decal that was a yellow based car so that's obviously why they don't need yellow as they do yeah because i must admit i had that um uh, the H fan, wouldn't it? That's in yellow. Yeah. It was yellow anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, it still had primer and everything onto it and then did it again. But that's the only thing I think I've ever painted yellow. The only thing I have got is that uh, Canada CL215. That's in yellow. That's awful colour, that is. Why anybody would do it like that? Well, it's, I know it's a yellow plane, but Jesus. Uh, it's not so nice. Yes. Yeah, it's not nice starting to work in, is it, when they're the coloured styling? Why yeah. can't just either stick with beige or grey? It's beyond me. Why do they have to give for like Revel used to be the worst, but that really dark green that they used to the tanks in. Yeah. Can't see the parts. No. No, and that's the trouble. You can't see the detail on it. I know when I did the Revel Red uh, Red Arrows Hawk, you know, mm. obviously it's in bloody red. You can't yeah. see what you're doing, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yes, it, it's yeah. not easy stuff to work with. But I would suggest if that's happening, is like Matt was saying, either like light fast it with black. So that's it. But probably yeah. just do grey on both sides. Do the inside of the shell on the outside. I think it's just it's translucent and it's carrying it through. So solid it up a bit. Yeah. Uh, Bobby says uh, thanks to all the live shows. Beats anything presently on TV. Fantastic. Question. What mm. is the best 172nd C47 Dakota kit? I'm planning on building a C47 uh, based on the aircraft used in the World War II DD landing or well, airdrops. Airfix, I'd say. Will you go with Airfix, yeah? Yeah. It's hard to get hold of, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's quite a few. I don't know what the Obby Bosses one's like, to be honest, because I know they do one. The old Italeria one's not too bad, actually. It's not a bad kit. I was going to say, that's that's my go, because I've only ever built the Italeri one. Um, yeah. And that wasn't well, too bad. Well, I think the Italeri one's the one to go for. And then, like I said, I've never really seen any reviews or any comments on the Obby Boss one. It's just kind of been swept under the carpet and forgot about as a... It's new. Hmm. It's only a few years old, but I don't, you know, price-wise, it's probably a lot more expensive, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, Airfix, if you can get hold of it, I'd say. Yeah, wasn't that famous of Airfix? They stopped it just before the anniversary. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They they sort of like <laughs> bring it out as the DC three, don't they? Then the C forty seven, the DC three, and I think they bought out the civilian one, which isn't the same as the military one, is it? The doors are different. Or yeah. did they bring the cargo door one out? That, yeah, the cargo the door, not the paratrooper one. Mm. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. 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 Probably didn't quite think that one through at the time. <laughs> Okay, uh, Ewan says, hi Phil, uh, quick question uh, about where to post pictures of a completed work. Mostly 135th scale armour, but also a couple of shameful aircraft. Uh, these are mostly from last year, I uh, don't have any uh, build photos. Still okay for me to create a portfolio of myself, uh, or do I post them in air? Okay, your best job probably um, doing a portfolio. So just go to the portfolio section in the forum start a portfolio and just bang them all up one behind the other okay do it in there if you've got any that you're particularly sort of proud of and you want to show a little bit more information about then pop them in the gallery but obviously we do want a bit of text in there as well explaining the build you know obviously just what you've used the paints the usual bits and pieces as we do on there, manufacturing and everything else whereas if you're just going to bung it into your profile you can just put the photos in there and people can go through them at their leisure uh, on that one so yes could just remind people not to post in the portfolio area because yeah. it's just for people's own posts, not for comments and things on it. I know what it is. Obviously, a lot of the time people post up in there. People don't realise it's in a portfolio, so they tend to post an answer and say that's fantastic or ask questions about it. The reason we say about keeping your portfolio clean is so when you add to it, it just drops in one below the other. Otherwise, what you end up with is a portfolio that's like 100 pages long because you've got people asking questions all amongst it uh, and it just jumbles it all up and it it's not easy just to go back and have a look at your portfolio then so that's why we say don't post any questions or anything in there message the person directly if you want to but don't actually do anything in there we can't lock the thread because you won't be able to post in it but uh, that's the idea to it it's just somewhere to view your work and you've got it all down in one place doing it that way so yes but as I say, I know some people don't notice that it's in a portfolio yeah. and then write something we, on there. We do go through occasionally and delete all the other posts that's in there. So if yeah. you ever wonder why your post was deleted, just because it was in that area, they don't go in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, David says, hi, Phil and team. I uh, hope this is also the correct place for posting questions during the live lockdowns. Absolutely. Uh, I'm increasingly finding myself uh waiting around for items to dry and was wondering if i am being a bit too careful over drying times normally waiting overnight uh i know that they are affected by lots of variables so assuming uk room temperatures conditions and normal amounts of paint sorry there are a few but i'm finding uh, that even the simple areas can take a week eg cockpit uh flow of work be as follows priming main colors gloss decals micro soul micro soul uh gloss uh protect the decals wash weathering followed by final matte coat so give me a quick ballpark sensible figure examples down below so he's on about so if he primes in mr surfacer with self-leveling thinners for paint you could yeah. probably if you're happy with the finish and there's nothing that you can see oddly wrong with it i should think within about an hour you can yeah. paint over that yeah yeah, yeah. That that, that, all yeah. of that you could do in a day so I prime it an hour main color leave it a day gloss decals sol set, set and sol i presume it means yeah and then give it a couple more hours and gloss it again you're done See, I would be fine with all of that right the way through, apart from when you're, um, if you're black basing for metalizers in a gloss, I would probably leave that overnight to go off. That's one area I would leave it overnight. I wouldn't go in there. And then obviously the metalizers before you mask over it, I'd probably leave that overnight as well. Purely because that's the only two areas where it can bite you. Because obviously if you've got uh, a gloss coat like this is a classic example this feels totally dry but if i hold on to this bearing in mind i only sprayed it this morning it is off okay but it will feel slightly tacky in your hand i always say the good thing is if you hold it in your hand and hold it for a few minutes the heat of your hand if you take your hand off and it feels sticky then it's not dry it's literally underneath it might be dry to the surface to the touch but underneath it's not Okay, so that might be one of those things where it come back and it bites you a little bit. So you want to do that. I would just check, 
just hold on to it, hold it for a couple of minutes, let go, and like this does, it still feels just a little bit like there's something not dry yet, but that was only because it was sprayed literally like an hour before we came on air. So uh, yeah, so that you want to let go. And then obviously metalizers, especially if you're masking over them, you want to make sure they've totally dried off and cured off as well. Because otherwise when you put tape on and then you take it off, you might peel it off. But the rest of it, like as in like set and sole, that's just one of those things where it takes as many coats as it takes. Thin coats, you know, a coat every sort of 20 minutes, half an hour. If it's a thin mm -hmm. coat, if it's a thick coat, it might take a few hours, but you'll be good to go, you know? And then obviously putting varnish on, stuff like that. So, yeah, I would say just if you're happy with it, you know, if you're happy that it's open cured, you'll be great. Yeah. But normal painting, like, you know, obviously if you're painting with uh, like Hataka with self-leveling thinners, you know, that I will deco onto that an hour afterwards because it will be dry because that stuff goes off. Even though obviously with the leveling thinners, it takes a little bit longer to go off. Uh, it's still not going to take days or weeks. You know, certainly you should be fine with that. The only thing I'd be very, very careful of with is if you're using um, Mr. Colour Aqueous paints mm. um, with, you know, normal thinners. Um, that takes, that can take, especially if you put it on thick, that can take a while. And, you know, we've all had that problem where you've then glossed over it and you get the crazy marbling effect because it hasn't dried properly. I'd, I'd probably give that a good. Mm. 24 48 hours to to gas off if you if you're using that but yeah out of them all i think that's probably the the one where it's bitten me a few times because that's when you get the eggshell effect and it cracks yeah. and that's always just been when i've used guns paints uh, yeah. and again but last time i used guns paints i used rapid thinners with it when i used yeah. it on the vc10 that worked beautifully yeah. that cured that problem so yeah. you know i yeah. recommend doing it that way get one of them yes available yeah. at all good pm stores around you yes all the pm stores have that yeah <laughs> yeah they won't have in about 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> uh, right okay buck says uh phil and team i'm building the edar mig 19s version for the group build edar goes to great pains to indicate uh, the paint colors uh for just about every surface except the v intake behind the front ring an area that is pretty obvious to the eye. I'm assuming it should be metallic, but which metallic? I think it would just be like aircraft aluminium back there because it's not a forward surface, so it's not going to be something that would have to be prone to heat and things like that. So I should think just normal sort of your aircraft aluminium colour. Yeah, because yeah. it's technically yeah. part of the intake, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. They weren't painted or out, were they? So no, no, it's just bare metal, wasn't it, really? So yeah. it's the same on it, hmm? same on lightnings and things, isn't it? It's got the same thing hmm. on the intake, can't it? Yeah. And... I'm just thinking if it's that thing you just do a bit of Googling and look at a load of pictures. Hmm. Enough walk arounds on them on the internet. So yeah. Matt, you're hissing again. Switch to our other mic. Is that better? <laughs> Is that still hissing? It is actually, it's fixed it. Thanks. Is that better? <laughs> it's yes. Fine. It's fine now. Yes. Yeah, you just need to hit it occasionally, clearly. Give it a whack on the table. Oh, you plug all the mic in, Matt. Can't bother that. No. It's behind you. That'll be set up tomorrow. Hmm. In the new look studio again. Studio number three. Right. Number four, we will be on. Because uh, Andy's flat pack furniture still. <laughs> Yeah, and he's doing flat pack <laughs> furniture tomorrow, is he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, hello, Phil. I've been left in the airfix. Battle of Britain Memorial Flight Millennium Collection. Uh, in near new condition. 11 kits in the box. Is it worth hanging on to? Thanks. Are they the new kits or are they the old ones they were chucking out? Well, Millennium Edition would be... 2020. It could be the new ones, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know because I say, obviously, the original Battle of Britain Memorial flight was all the old kits, wasn't it? So yes. Hey. Yeah, they've updated it now because there's two Spitfires in that American, isn't there? Yeah. So, like you've just said, that depends on who, which, if they're the old kits. And... Yeah. If it's the old stuff, I won't worry about it. If it's the new ones, and it might be. But as I say, depending on which ones are in it. Yes. That's... 
Do a bit of research, see if it's new tools or old tools, I think. Yeah. You get a nice poster in it. Do yeah. you? Oh. Of the Lancaster Hurricane Spitfire. Hmm. Yeah. Does it say when it was issued? Uh, 20, well, 2019, 2020, so... Yeah, it should be neutral stuff then, really. Same like here, isn't it? No good, Max. Switch over to your echoey, Mike. I'm on the echoey, Mark. Right. Is that better? That's better. What have you done? I wonder if the battery would go in. Probably. Well, Got a new battery? No. Not, not like at hand, no. No, you're echoey, definitely. You're better off just using your webcam, Mike. Because that that's crackling now like crazy. Oh, God. <laughs> I bought him a mic over yesterday. Here we go. <laughs> oh, my Lord, look out. Let's have a look what this does, if I can get this to work. Is that a blue Yeti? I don't know what it is. No, that's a snowball. Yeti snowball. Oh, a snowball. That's a blue Yeti. Okay. <laughs> that's a good joke. Right, wait for it. It's gonna blast us all out now. Have we got a switch to it on this? It looks like a hairdryer. It does. <laughs> Lauren says, question, you've inspired me to build an old school Voyager uh, model from Star Trek. How would you do the windows? Uh, they don't have any glass. Uh, so would you use decals or try to paint them in? I'd paint them in with these. Get yourself some Posca pens and off you go. It's like life changing when you do it. You think that's how I did all the detailed work on the 2001 Odyssey. You just go around in each one of those containers and it's got three per section times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's got 33 of them to do and it's a right pain, but you go along with your pens and you just go doo -doo 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 -doo, and it's pleasant to do it. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Yep. Oh, I'm on the mic then. I'm on the Yeti. That's it. That's a lot better. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's fine. That's it then, Andy. That's it. It's got a massive cable. Why isn't it like wireless? <laughs> Pay all that money and it's not wireless. Because wireless, you have to put batteries in there and run out, Matt. Yeah, oh, like your yeah. old ones have clearly just done. <laughs> it's down to the dregs. <laughs> I've had it a long time. <laughs> that battery's been in forever, hasn't it, and this one. That's why it's died. I must admit, mine did it the other week. I was actually did a load of filming, and there's nothing. Because, obviously, this one, that one's main-powered, but this one had gone, so I had to switch over. You could put eyes on that. You could, couldn't you? It's like a, like a Star Wars droid, isn't it? <laughs> when Where's I took your it one? When I took it around, Matt said, I thought that wasn't working. That's why you got a new one. <laughs> well, yeah. And I said, That's... no, we're just because... Where's, the... Where's your new one? Show your new one. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, and it's on a proper arm and rig and everything. Look. Looks Bottom, like he's going to start singing. Yeah, it? that's it. He's going to sound like Adele. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah, what, a, yeah. a computer. <laughs> 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 oh god <laughs> oh dear <laughs> uh, right okay so if we just do normal questions then if anyone's got any questions shout them out in the both the chats we'll keep an eye on them i'll try and walk through yes it is working you're fine we can all hear that Testing. thanks can, Testing it. can somebody hit him <laughs> just mute him <laughs> off uh Roy, uh where does andy store his finished models Last week he popped out to another room and returned with a 30 second fly hurricane. He Matt, has them all over the house. Matt, go like that. What, like that? No, yeah, that, go, that, go like that behind you. Yeah, I was oh. going to say, and he's got half a warehouse and then a house full. If it, uh, <laughs> if it wants an invasion of privacy, he could um, do a little tour of his built models around the house. Yes. <laughs> After the video, sometimes. To fair, I've got a very understanding wife who allows me to have 
the Actually, milk. hold on, I, I'll debate this. He's not that understanding because you don't buy apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I have a uh, blackberry pie last night instead of apple pie. I was I was uh, gutted. Winter fruit pie with cherry in it. That was it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's seasonal. Seasonal. <laughs> No, but, uh, yeah, I've got quite a few around the house, but to fair, I'm, I'm desperately running out of space, if not run out of space. Um, and there's a lot of them um, upstairs or there's various places there's one, in the store. Where, time, yeah, there's one in the bottom, cabinet behind that, yeah. see behind me, look. It's a yeah. bit dark on the bottom with yeah. what it is, so, but yeah. To be honest, we're running out of space here, so we're just going to send them all to Phil. He can display them. Uh, yeah, like where? <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite full over there myself. My cabinets, literally, I can't get any more in them. They are jammed all in there now. Hmm. They need dusting in there, really, but I can't get in there. It's like Jenga. So, <laughs> not good. Uh, right, Phil, do you use your apron practically, or is it an advert? I hardly ever wear this. I only do it when I'm really doing a really dirty job. No, it's real. Look, look, I'm covered in crap. Literally, it, it does do its purpose very, very well. Normally, I have it like this as well when I'm doing these. But I do because it, it saves me trousers getting covered in junk. But when I'm doing me sanding or me painting, but also it does catch all your crap as well. Quite that, handy. That, we don't sell them before anybody wants one. We were going to, but we never got that far. So uh, that reminds me. Hey, man. <laughs> Do what, sorry? So that reminds me. What, your apron? Your You've pin it? Tamiya ones there, they're posh. Yeah, my Tamiya one's knocking around somewhere. I don't know where it is. They're all very Tamiya ones, they're all very posh there. I think we could still get them. I should ask if we could get the Tamiya ones. I bet people would buy them. Yeah, yeah I'll tell, I'll see if we get the Tamiya ones. Well, they're, we saw them there, didn't we, when we were going round? They had a pile of them, so yeah. Yeah, I don't know how much they are, but. Yeah. Uh, I think mine's upstairs, actually. Where I do my painting, I put it on because I'm a bit of a messy sprayer. So, <laughs> hmm. say getting covered. More auctions, Alan. Why? What we're auctioning? Andy's built kit. <laughs> Just talking about and these practicalities are. They're very good because obviously they do save you. If you do like Andy's done many a times and tip paint everywhere, at least it ends up on this instead of anywhere else. But generally as well, it's like, you know, how well you can see. But the difference in colour, this is jet black normally. I can show you a nice new one here, just to prove the uh, colour efficiency of these things. Andy Michaels in chat. Look, here we go. That's a new one versus mine. So it is. Um, that's what you're hanging. Yeah. But, so. Yes, I, I, I have a, I did say thank you very much to him. Yes, thank you, Michael, for the uh, stuff you sent. Very much appreciated. We'll get it dished out. Yeah, I did, I did say thank you at the beginning of the show. Ah, good, good, good. Mm. No, no flory swag coming because nobody's open to do it. <laughs> yeah, basically. basically. Yeah. Still. <clears throat> yes, can't find anyone to do it. Ah, uh, no. question. Oh, Mike, well, there you go. We've sorted out Mike's ma uh, microphone. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, Lawrence, we've just answered because they're putting it in both places now. Guys, keep it in one place. Andy will read questions from one side. I'll do the ones from the other. Um, do, 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 do. I've ruined a pair of my expensive jeans modelling. Yeah, that's why. To be honest, that's why I wear these. I've got my sort of combat things because that way, like literally, pockets are hanging off and ripped and stuff. That's from where I've been sanders and stabbed myself. Also, they're particularly crusty on one side. Not me personally, but super glue. So when you've got super glue on your hands, you wipe it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I good. normally wear jogging trousers when yes. I'm in the house, you know, just like modeling. And about three pairs I've got, I've got holes just on the right hand leg. Mm. Just from wiping sanding sticks on them. That's it, I know. That, that yeah. is the thing. If you can save yourself some clothes and stuff, it stops yeah. your other half shouting at you. Yeah. So why are these like rock hard or got paint all down them? <laughs> Bob says when you're doing aprons, t shirts, film out again. We can't get anyone to do them, and I'm still waiting for me work uniform. So, yeah, you are the same same reason. It's just yeah, the way the world is at the moment. Yeah, we're in lockdown. People are closed. Yes, everywhere shut at the moment. As I say, but... just to reiterate, I know I haven't, you know, but yesterday I did write it up. Medals are not going to be going anywhere till the end of next month, purely because the guy who does our medals, he's closed. 
So for lockdown, and we're not coming out of lockdown until mid next month at the earliest, uh, and he's closed. So, I, you know, as I say, I don't want to make him go in and do them just for us and put him at risk. So. Medalless. Yeah, so medals will come, but obviously they were going to be a little bit down the line, yeah. Uh, where are we? Uh, yeah, Airfix Dakota. Recently talked, very nice. Uh, what is a good kit for detail and fit wise of a PBY5? Cracky, limited eye. Oh, yeah. HPH. Well, yeah, if you want to go for a very detailed one, you've got an HPH. Um, yes. Struggling. You know, Academy or... I would say Academy do the 72nd one, isn't it? In that Minicraft, do you do it? Is it Minicraft? Yeah, I don't know. I, right I don't know which one I'm thinking of. Oh, we're not, are we on about Catalina or the other yeah. one? Yeah, Catalina. Or the yeah. Mariner. What's the Mariner? I'm going to tempt fate and get one down, which it actually is Matt's. <laughs> one coming from the depths of the stash. Crash. Yeah, it is, literally. If you want to go 48, right. that's the yeah. one, though, isn't it? That's, that's the only one, I think, you 48. Yeah. The other one, 32nd, isn't it? HPH was 32nd. Yeah, 32nd, yeah. Second. yeah. And then 72nd is Academies, unless you really, really, really want to do the old Airfix one. Really, PB, really P, PBM. A PBM is a mariner, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Where are we? Is that um, recess or? That's recess. I'll tell you what that recess. is. recess. This is. Look. Absolutely cracking kit, that is. Still sealed and bagged, but yeah, it's all recessed. Riveting, recess power lines. Yeah, it's a nice kit. Nice it's still available, man. Fabric on the back. Give you an idea of the size of it. The bloody wings. Look the size of them wings. So, yes. To be honest, it doesn't look bad at all. It's not one of those ones where I think, Jesus Christ, that's... It's not many parts, which is nice. So, obviously, there's not a massive interior going on here. But it has got a bit of one. Nice clear parts. Need a mass set for that, clearly. Mm. So, of course. A bit too bad. To be honest, it's a really, really nice aftermarket decal set for that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd definitely probably look down the aftermarket route for some uh, new decals. So I must admit, this was going to be my seasick entry until I've got so many to do. Like, literally, I could do them for months. I could do an entire year's builds, but just seasick entry. So, but yes. Are we going to have an the... extension on it then? Well, you could do, because obviously I've got this. Obviously, we're going to be doing the Zero. We've got the S860B. I've uh, got technically that Canadair CL215. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, you name it. I've got tons of stuff. Not to mention naval, just aircraft in general. So, but yeah. No, oh, it's actually. Quite a good little kit, this one. So, this is, if, say, if you're going to go 48 scale, that's the one you want to go for. Is it available still, or is it well out? No, that's been well out of production again. And probably, I don't know, fetching stupid money if you can get one now again, because they did before till it got re-released. Yeah, 2014 was the last time it was released. Yeah. There you go. There you go. James has put both for silly money on eBay. Sell it, Phil. Cash in. <laughs> I couldn't do that possibly because obviously that's your kit. Although yeah, you auctioned mine off last auction. Yeah, I was about to say technically it's your kit because we did a swap for someone. <laughs> uh, you know, if you perhaps we'll bang it in the next auction. No, we'll bloody not. I'm keeping that. Oh, all right. <laughs> Some nice aftermarket engines in it. It'd be look lovely. So we hold on. We've got a couple of questions on our chat regarding a uh, couple of manufacturers. Uh, Alan's put any news on the Great Wall Lobbies F-15s? No, it's when they arrive because we, like we've said on numerous shows, shipping, delays, 
containers. I don't know. When they're in, they're in. I don't know when. I've got no firm dates and what date probably was originally thinking for all the Great Wall Lobby stuff is probably now been delayed again. So sorry, it can't be a bit more concrete that. And as for the border models, Tiger One, I've got no idea about that, Tom, at all. Don't know when that's coming. No clue whatsoever. Mm. You know, it could be out in the Far East. The thing is, what you've got to think about now in the UK, this could be out in the Far East, like we read with this kinetic Harrier for last year. When we get over here is God knows. Yeah. It? But now, technically, you really can't go now to the Far East to buy them because mm. you are going to get hammered for it. Um, and even if you go to Europe, I think you're going to have the same issues. So it's, it's yeah, I think it's just a waiting game. But one other thing is, is that the importers are being hammered on the cost of containers. So they're bulking up on deliveries. So they're obviously not bringing them in as often. Yeah, they'll, they'll, you know, rather than bringing off a container in, they're going to fill a container. So they'll wait and before yeah. they bring stuff in. So it's just going to be, you know, rather than getting 12 deliveries a year, they'll probably get six four. deliveries, four I deliveries. They're yeah. probably trying to do it quarterly. I know some of them are. Yeah. They're going to do it quarterly, I think. Yeah. So... Uh, best recommendations for a 148 Stuka? Airfix. Uh, Airfix, yep. He's, uh, he's not on for a variant. He's not bothered. Yeah, the Airfix ones are brilliant, really nice. And then after that, if you can get them, the Azagawa ones are good as well. Yeah. But yeah, the Airfix ones are the are the ones to go for, I think. It's hilarious ones aren't bad, are they? You get all full engine and everything, but... Yeah. Who? Who? It's hilarious. It's hilarious doing... Don't... Italeri do or is it Hasegawa? Oh, I'm thinking of. No, Italeri do do. I was just being sarky because it's Italeri. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Airfix, I would Airfix, say. definitely Airfix. Kinder's got a bit small, look. Look how small a Kinder is now. Jesus, is it worth it? What is the rest of it? Like a bat it's size. A, I feel it's I've been a jumbo up. one as well. And why are you pinching Lydia's sweets? She don't like Kinders. Uh, what? <laughs> she don't really eat chocolate. She don't not bothered about it. Strange so. child. <laughs> She's strange. You're right. She's very strange. <laughs> okay, Russell says afternoon. Decided to buy the Tamiya Panzer Three ETO. Was that Eastern Theatre Operations? European. Yeah, European. Theater. That's it. Theatre Operations. Uh, uh, one you guys think is okay. Which what do we reckon then? Do we think it's a good kit? Which one? The Tamiya one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's fab. That's the one Kev built for his diorama. Oh, right, okay. Fact, yeah. I've got the magazine here, hold on. But what he did for our, um, what you would call it upstairs? Yes. So, shameless plug to Kev, but there's his Panzer Free on the, his diorama that he were doing upstairs for our, uh, well, oh, last couple, two years ago, that is, you know. Yeah, it will be two years. He, we, he, he came up on live the upstairs. So I better not show inside, but yeah. So really nice kit to have here, isn't it? So mm -hmm. <laughs> not nice. much to say. Yeah. Uh, also, he's looking for a good Stug 4. Any recommendations? A Stug 4? Actually, the Academy one that we've got in stock is a nice one. There you go. That's a newish tool. After that, I think it's Dragon. Because the uh, Tamiya one's ancient, I won't yeah. go for that. Hmm. Um, but yeah, the Academy one's okay. I can't think of anybody else who does the Stug 4, because everybody goes for the Stug 3. Hmm. Um, um, I must admit, I'm not up on my Stugs. Something no. Like, sadly, I'm lacking well, in my life. I think you need to do a bit of you know homework and homework. bedtime. I need a YouTube stugs. video on that one. <laughs> <laughs> David uh, says, sorry, David says, guys, we've got some bent brackets on my Airfix Valiant Bombay. What's the best way to straighten them? Is it possible? They are one millimetre diameter and three centimetres in length. Cheers. Sorry, say that again. <laughs> bent brackets on his Airfix Valiant Bombay. What's the best way to straighten them? If they're bent, I'd replace them with a little bit of brass. If it's one mil by three mil. One mil by three centimetres. Yeah, by three centimetres. Seriously, I'd just put a piece of brass tube in instead. I've, I've got a better idea. Shut Bombay doors. Don't see it. Or close the Bombay doors. <laughs> 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 I've got a Valiant here if you want a donor one. <laughs> Did uh, you get the extra set with that? 
the refueling set? Uh, I don't think I did because we've had this before. I did have the refueling set for it because it was separate, wasn't it? And yes. I think I sold the refueling set as a standalone to somebody who wanted it back in the day. So when I've been through that box before, I haven't got the refueling set anymore, but I definitely had it. So, yes. You could try putting extra thin on them and leaving it for a bit and then try bending it back in. See if they'll bend, but if you're gonna, if you, yeah, you're probably gonna have to replace them anyway, so you might as well give it a go. Mm. And then when they're extra thin, it'll stick, stick, yeah, go hard again. And see if yours are broke, no, because it's underneath an F 16 30 second scale in flight, which is underneath a S uh, MiG 27 that's in flight, which is underneath then an HPX Tiger Cat, an A 40 Skyhawk, an SU 24 SM Fencer. And the AH1 Sky Raider. And I'm not getting them all out of the way to get that kit out. <laughs> it's buried. Uh, right. Uh, guys, why don't MIG ammo paints get a lot of people talking about them or fans in general? What's wrong with them? I don't, it's personal choice with paints. I think that's the thing. People, some people don't like them. They're very, very thin. I don't like them because they're too thin. Personally, I like my paints a little bit thicker. But again, it's a personal choice. Like most things, you get people who love attacker paints and you get people who hate attacker paints. People don't yeah. like Tamiya. I had a guy the other week who said he couldn't get on with Tamiya paints live on the show, wasn't it? And I can't work that one out because I think they're the most easiest forgiving of all the paint brands out there. But again, you know, he has no problem with guns and everything else. And it is yeah. those things. Horses for courses, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Especially with paint. Hmm. Also, I think, also, you know, to be honest, MIG paint, it's not anything new. It's very much like the Academy stuff it, in their way, like this one, the Academy Air Series. They're quite thin as well. And I think it's just that thing. There's so many of the paints that are roughly all the same. There's not a lot of difference in them. So I think it's just swamped in its market, so to speak. Uh, I use uh, school powder poster paint colours, uh, water-based, about 50p for, for 500 grams. For what? What are we talking about, Russell? There, I've missed it there. It's, it's pigments, it says below. Oh, right. Pigments. Oh, yeah, as pigments, etc. Didn't you find that they, as I say, pigments technically are ground-up material, but obviously poster paints and stuff like that, I would have thought they're just dried acrylic. Don't they sort of get a bit messy? Mm. I used to use um, pastels and chalks back in the day. Mm. But like I say, they do sort of like, they don't... Uh, they don't yeah, adhere yeah. well. No, no. I think they're all right on paper and stuff. So if you were using yeah. like poster paint and you came near it with like enamels, you'd expect it just to bleed like hell and run and go all over the place. That would be my worry. I've never... But again, yeah. if, you, if that's what you use and get on with, absolutely. Uh, Alan saying about his crap van, or his crap van arrived today. Oh, there you go. Uh, Andy, what paint did you use on your Fly Hurricane 30 second scale cockpit? Interior <laughs> colour. <laughs> exact time ago, shade. I know, but hey. I'd imagine probably Tamiya. XF fifty one to be honest with you, but I honestly can't remember. Seventy one. Yeah, that's what I said. Did, did I say sixty one? Seventy one. Sixty one. Fifty one. I think you said it originally. <laughs> Seventy one. I was thinking, what's fifty one? It's like bingo. <laughs> you used a <laughs> colour in the uh, Tamiya series. Hockey drab. No, yeah, seventy one. Mm. Uh, I imagine, but at fair. Okay. You. You could have you. Who else have you got there? Because you wouldn't have had attacker when you did that. So, Mr. Colour, Model A, Model A, any of the above. Um, I think it would be, yeah, wouldn't it's, it? It's, it's, it's a standard colour, isn't it? Of RAF interior green, so yeah. which I know technically XF51 isn't because it's a Japanese interior green, isn't it? But it's, it's close. close enough, yeah. Yeah, 51's uh, cocky drab. Mm. That's definitely the wrong colour. <laughs> <laughs> hello from France. Hello, France. And hello to Pen. Uh, good morning, everyone from Paceville. There we go. Oh, right. Where's that? That's in, uh, is that California, CA? 
Yeah, I think so. Uh, yes. Yeah. Or uh, Cambridge. Or Cambridge. <laughs> or Canada. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> California, we think. Yeah. So uh, Christian has put some of me, some of my Mister Colour lacquers are really thick in the bottle, difficult to get out with a pipette. Would it be a problem to add some self leveling thinners to the bottle? Not if you use self leveling thinners all the time. If not, I'd decant some out of it with a stirring stick into a different pot and then thin it. Because then once you've contaminated your pot of paint, you can't go back. I must yeah. admit, I am guilty of that. When I get down to, and to be honest, it's why I have, uh, I think I've binned it off now. But when I was getting low, obviously for mixing up the black for this, I got down to the bit where there was probably like quarter of a bottle. So then I filled it up with leveling thinners, yeah. shook it into the airbrush and out. And then that's technically ready for rinsing out and the, recycling. I think the problem you've got is, is obviously if you do that, if you just use leveling thinners, you're fine, aren't you? Mm. But if you chop and change, yes, I'm not being funny. Six months down the line, you pick the paint up and you ain't got a clue what you've thinned it with before, unless you've got adding notes and all that lot. So it is like yeah. I always preach is better to actually decant it into a separate pot and thin it that way. But thing is, it does say that the mystical lacquer thinners, so lacquer paint. So what else are you going to put in it anyway? Rapid thinner, normal thinner. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, so but, you can have yeah, a right brew going speak. in there. But you can <laughs> still use. <laughs> Other thinners with it anyway, couldn't you? If you even if you did put leather in thinner with it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose the blue label one probably the best one to go for. Cause that's probably it's in between. It's standard thinner, isn't it? Stand, yeah, standard yeah. thinner, isn't it? Yeah, I quite like the blue one. Uh, mm. To be honest, I think that's okay. Do you know? I've never tried it. Yeah, I bet you've got some. No, I haven't. No. All oh, right. No. No, I quite like the blue one. It has got its uses, like, like you know, they all have, but. Yeah. Northern California, by the way. That. Oh, there we go. What's it called? Pacerville. Pacerville, yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, hello from Paris in France. That's it. South Ontario. There you go. Apparently the Battle of Britain kit is the old kits. Got one himself. Oh. Uh, put horizontally, it looks like a craft out of Star Trek. But probably because it is. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's what it is. There's the... This is the toilet seat, as I call it. <laughs> that goes on the front, apparently. I've got that much out of this. I'm getting the hang of this Star Trek stuff. I'll be a Trekkie by the end of this build. Phil, why haven't you glued the dome bit together? Is it because you're going to do the lighting? You mean the toilet or? seat? Because yeah. I thought it would be comical to have it to talk. <laughs> all right. No, the it's idea not... is I'm going to put all the clear parts in. So, and because it can all go, obviously you've got like a clear bing at the bottom and there's a clear thing at the top and you've got windows in here. The whole point to it is, is that you'll be able to, this can actually all go together afterwards. And uh, in testing, uh, it fits really nicely. So it should almost be seamless. When I tested it out and put it together, that it actually overlips slightly. So you can get away. You won't have like a white ring all the way around. It should be absolutely fine. So that is the plan of action that will do it as... Uh, put it in, get it all painted and everything. And then just before we come to Declan, I will then put them in. We will glue it down. We'll fit it onto the front. Uh, so when it all goes in, it should be all together. But it's just because I'm trying to cheat. I thought it would say you could fit the lighting kit in it. No, there's no lighting kit going in it because clearly I've given up on lighting kits and motors and all the gimmicky <laughs> stuff that you never use. So. Mm. And... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I've got a 1 16th scale uh, Fender F2 by Trumpeter. What's Fender. A Fender? Uh, Fender's yeah. a thingy in it, that car too. I don't know. I don't know what one of them is. Uh, for the F2 by Trumpeter, the upper hole is warped. What is a Fender? Or an F2 by Trumpeter. I can't think what that is. Andy, quick. Gale mate it. <laughs> What's the F2? Andy's area. Dictionary corner. Isn't a fender like a front wing in American terms for a car? Yes. Oh, is it a uh, Panzer IV? I don't know. Alpha F2 116th. Right. So it's like, it's just, uh, yeah. I think it means the. Yeah. Fenders. The yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
You have bombs <laughs> on the tank. <laughs> I think it means practical that demonstration. Bit. Oh right, okay. What you mean the wheel arch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Track, let's call it a track arch. I think he's right track calling it a fender. It would be a fender on it if it's yeah. tracked, didn't it? So I'll go with that. Yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, it's warped. Is there a way to fix this, putting it under hot water that will work? <sighs> the trouble that you have when you're dealing with injection molded parts, it's not like resin, yeah, hot water, and you can reshape it to anything you like once it goes cold. But the trouble is, is obviously the molecules have got memory with plastic, so it always wants to bounce back. And if you get it so hot to where it starts to really bend, it will still spring back to how it was unless you get it proper hot and then you run the risk of it. It'll never go back in any shape whatsoever. Personally, I'll bend it over your thigh or something like that to try and flatten it out uh, and do it that way, going the other way with it. But once you've got it glued in place, it might hold its shape and you'll be good. And even if it's got a slight ripple to it, if it's that type of area, you can almost say it's out of whack. You know, you could actually bend it yourself to make it look like it's not flat and perfect. So it looks like it has tried to squeeze between a tree or a house or go through a house or whatever it is. And you could give it a story, you know, because to be honest, that's what I do with all of my stuff. Happy little accidents. If I can't <laughs> fix it and make it look perfect, I'll give it a tail. So that's all I do. Depends how warped it is, I suppose. But yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh... If it's got a little bit of ripple to it, honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. If it's proper out, then I would probably. I'm going to say they're only out. made out of sheet steel anyway, so they'd yeah. be well damaged and battered, and especially yeah. being in front of a tank like you say, hitting a wall, hitting a tree, hitting bushes, they just bend and go out of shape. They always look better when they've got a bit of damage on them. I was anyway, say, sometimes it might be nicer if it's got a little bit of a ripple into it, and it's not you know level and perfect. It'll probably yeah. be far more realistic. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, what's the standard quality of ICM models? Great. Again, Good. this is a really difficult one to answer because it depends which kit you're talking about. Because ICM went through a sort of renaissance a couple of years ago when they had a new designer in, and they literally went from being poor to medium, I would say, being generous, because some of their stuff's a bit crap. And then overnight, they literally went to bloody amazing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I've built quite a few of theirs now, and I've done their newer stuff, and I've only ever built, I think I did their Spitfire the one of the old ones and again it's a spitfire don't get me wrong but it's not like a nice spitfire so i would say do your homework on it have a look all the newer stuff that is say five years old onwards is probably going to be okay oh, yeah yeah before Definitely. that you really want to do your own work on it have a look at some reviews see what people say about it because uh, some of their stuff can be a bit iffy i think from the dawnier 17 onwards is when they got good hmm or the 88. It might have been the JU-88, actually, who was their first decent aircraft kit. Mm. Armour, I don't know, to be honest, because they did do a few older ones, but you can kind of tell where the box art's changed. Yes, yeah. From the early stuff yeah. to the new stuff, and that's the indicator. It's the older, you know, mm. the older kits compared to the new one is the is the box art. Um, like, the artwork's definitely different. So... With that, like our... Um... Covid infection rate, don't they? It's all up and like a uh, nice little slump, <laughs> and then it went the you know, quality went yeah. quick yeah. through the yeah. roof. It did. It went through the roof. But it, I think that's quite a good point, though. If you look at their old art, which are very sort of artistic, that's the older ones. All the ones which is more digital art, shall we say? Yeah. You know, that's obviously clearly the new one. So all the sort of the the modern artwork ones, that sort of digital art, where it's clearly be done on a computer and all the rest of it. Obviously, that's going to be the newer ones. The older ones, which are more traditional artist drawings and sort of watercolors and stuff like that, that will be the old ones. And again, yeah. they are some. They do some stuff that nobody does, and that's the nice thing to it. But it is a little bit clunky and iffy and all the rest of it. Like somebody was asking about doing a Spitfire the other week, and it was the same one I did. And I remember the the top seam across like the cowling, and that was truly awful. Um, and it's one of those you just bite the bullet, just fill it full of filler and go because it's it's never going to be nice, no matter how much you dry fit it. Um, and we were it discussing, is, saying it's, it was quite common for a lot of their kits to be like that. The thing is, for the price part on their Spitfires, the detail's amazing. You get a full engine, a full cockpit. You get gun bays, if I remember. Yeah. Beer, beer, barrel, beer like, barrels. Yeah, you get beer barrels. Beer barrels. Yeah. So, you know, I think with a bit of time and clean-up. It is. It's clean-up, test-fitting, and just sharpening them up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's not for the beginner, but, no. again, you can have a nice... Mm. 
if you like building and all that, I think it's, you know, it is doable. But obviously, you're going to go for Ed Ord now or, yeah. you know, one of the later ones, aren't you? But, but they have got a really good catalogue of kits. If you go right the way through the back, the old stuff and everything, they've done everything, really. And they've done some yeah. really interesting subjects. As I say, they're newer ones, though. It's literally like night and day. You know, oh, we've had yeah. this before. People have said, oh, I built one of the kits. It was horrible. And it's like, well, what was it? And they're like, oh, it was the old Mustang or whatever it was. And it's like, well, yeah, but if you build one of the new bombers, especially the medium bombers that they've been doing, the German ones and stuff like that, they're proper mid yeah. way to go. They're yeah. HE-111s, say, ju 88s, 87s, stuff like that. Yeah, load, yeah they, they do a load, don't they? But, mm. um, they just, like I say, they, and they're, they are releasing interesting subjects mm. people want. Yes. Which always helps, doesn't it? Uh, J U H A, that's above above Matt, isn't it? Above you. Mm. Yeah. Yes, so, yes, it is, isn't it? You enjoyed that, didn't you? Yeah, it's right, yeah. By the time so, it's only spinners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I did their um SU twenty five. Uh, you know, for modern ones. And again, it's got some really good design areas to stop you getting big seam lines and stuff like that. They've actually thought about the way it goes together from a modeling point of view to hide the seams. Um, yeah. yeah, so again, very, very nice. Good level of detail right the way through. Yeah, can't fault it. Yeah. Um, just Rob's asked a question about TS65 Pearl Clear. Is it a matte or a gloss finish? I actually don't know. I, I don't know. I would have thought it would be gloss, but I don't know. I've tested it on some if you've got any, Rob, because I'm not 100%, because we don't sell the TS tin, no. so I don't know. Um. All it's going to do is give an effect. So I'd say if it's a pearl clear, it's going to be a gloss. I was going to say, if it's pearl clear, surely clear. it'll be a gloss, won't it? Yeah, it will be. But it'll give that effect, wouldn't it? The yeah. frosty effect, as yeah. you want to call it. or the You know what I mean? So I'd say it's gloss. But just test it on something, Rob, for you. It, you whatever you're spraying with it. Because I have got, this is the plan for this thing, is actually got pearlescent clear coat. Um, so I did oh, think but... about giving obviously yes. the enterprise here a coat of that when it's masked to give the difference between the plated areas and non i was going to get the clear coat will go right the way over it and obviously that's a gloss so it should be shimmery as well and yeah yeah the um well they do them in the lps don't they the yeah pearl clear coat pearl clear coat yeah um, so yes, yes. Uh, do, 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 do. Tom says, just emails a car model and it's lifted the paintwork, zero paints directly onto the plastic, followed by two pack lacquer. Any advice for better adhesion? Yeah, okay. primer. 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 Absolute Never primer. Ever dodge primer. Hmm. Ever. Because that's what happens, it will bite you. Yes. And it is, yeah. like I've said it a million times before, every time I have thought I'd save myself. An hour and not prime it, the bastard's bitten me on the ass. <laughs> Always, every but time. Use a lacquer based primer, not a acrylic based primer, otherwise, you'll end up with the same problem because you'll just peel it off. thing yeah. is, as well, I think you've got to remember as well is tr treat it as in I would, because car bodies are very nicely molded and always glossy, aren't they? Yes. I would key it up, I'd give it a rub down with something. Just to, before you even prime it to make sure it's it's adhered properly. Hmm. Just some uh, Scotch Bright or something and Scotch Bright uh, two thousand when dry fifteen hundred of uh, uh, sanding stick a very fine sanding stick you don't want to be obviously coarse one but a polishing stick would do one of the not the polished side the other side just something to give it some fine texture so the paint's got something to grip to. Yes, and I think that's half the problem with people having peely paint. Because there's just no texture there, either in your primers or whatever, for the next coat to grip to. And that's what you want. You only want, like, the final top coat, if you're doing cars, like a lacquer coat, is to be the super smooth one. So, it's, um, so you, you know, you can polish it and stuff and get a nice finish. And this is from Matt, who used to paint real cars for decades. Yeah. Yeah, you learn a little bit or two about painting when you've done it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> apparently that uh catalina is on ebay at the moment between 97 and 125 quid and they get it up on ebay selling it <laughs> uh... auction. <laughs> auction next auction <laughs> anyway have you told him what we're doing next weekend i have oh, actually because we we have one of the gentlemen from ipms bolton was on earlier because obviously oh, we said right. it was this weekend but because we forgot and we need a bit of time to prep yeah. 
that uh, yeah. obviously we're going for it next weekend. So we're doing a homage to the Bolton show that unfortunately is obviously had to be cancelled because of the uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. So as in Telford and turkey shoot mode, we will be on next weekend, won't we? Yeah, so like we were saying, we'll be doing sale prices as well from obviously PM and Flory and all the rest of it. So there'll be discounts obviously throughout the site, specials, flash sales. I've just thought, is it your birthday this weekend? Mine? Yeah. No, week tomorrow. Week tomorrow. I think. And it was always around Bolton show time. Yeah. No, we, we always we... have our birthdays around certain things. So as I say, it was like mine was Hinkley, Matt's yeah. Bolton time. Yeah. So that's how we used to know the shows because we were usually sat in the hey. club that evening because of it. Not that people know, but Bryn, who we know one of us, is Telford. He's Because yeah. he's on the 10th of November. So his is always Telford. I think he's in chat or he, he was in chat. But yeah, so his is always Telford weekend all around there. So yeah, yeah it's funny that, isn't it? But yes. <laughs> that's how we do the shows. It's always that's on our birthdays. Do it. That's how we know when the shows are. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> that's how we know when our birthdays are. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have birthdays because I'm too old. Yeah, he stopped it oh, when man. he got to 60. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it this way. You're in a higher tier than the rest of us for getting your COVID jab. Oh, no. Two tiers. <laughs> Shell says she's in tier never, so. <laughs> yeah, I'll be, I think I made that tier that was all about last night, which should be around about autumn at the earliest. <laughs> like, great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we just I saw something here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I've always found that Revel's painting guides <laughs> uh, and their paints are listed aren't available in North America. But Revel have always had this weird thing, although they did stop it for a while, but I've noticed it's come back again, um, that they don't use like federal standard codes and stuff like that. It would always use 10%, 20% of this, a little bit of bat ear, you know, Rap droppings. It's a bit Tamiya though, isn't it? Tamiya then, did the same though. Yeah. Tamiya yeah, yeah. used to do the same. At least Tamiya now usually put the FS numbers in there and all the rest of it, the standards. But Ravel started to do it as well. All of theirs just had standard FS numbers uh, and obviously how to make it using their paints. But I've noticed <laughs> that a few of their kits recently have gone back to doing it again. You know, yeah. like this thing. Don't look at the colour guy for this thing. It's like mystical. <laughs> so yeah, look, it's all different makeup, the mixes in this one. So, yes, look, you need 90% of that, 5% of that, 5% of that. You can have 70, 30 mix, 70, 30, 60, 40, 85%, 10%, and 5%. So, yes. All I can say, he should consider himself lucky that he can't get Rebel paints in America because then he doesn't have to use them. How different are their enamels to Umbral? Oh, their enamels. What about their enamel? Because we know that Aquatus is a bit like emulsion. Their, yeah, what do they call it? Is it aqua? Ac the aqua stuff, which is brilliant for brush painting. Hand painting, yeah. I've got yeah, a couple of pots under here. Yeah. And I do like the little <laughs> tubs, the way, let me show the ladies and gentlemen if they haven't seen it before, the way that their tubs work. I don't think I've ever used their enamel. Well, yeah, hold on a minute. I'm not 50 next. All oh, next week, cheeky sod. I'm nowhere near 50. Well, I am, but not. <laughs> no, I'm not 50 next week. <laughs> Bloody gobby on chat. Oh dear <laughs> So these ones, you twist them, which is actually a little good idea on this. Hold on, let me do a... But you, you twist it, and then, so you end up with it like that. So it's dead handy. And then you've got your little thing, so you can put it like that. So in some ways, it's quite a good little idea system for doing it. Because you can then tip it in here or in here, and it's stationary. You're not going to knock it over. Yeah. And they don't it's... leak either, weirdly, because no. it doesn't look like there's much holding all of that together. Yeah, but you know, uh, you know literally... what? I personally think that's a really good design. Yeah, and then when they go in like that, they hold together really, really nicely. I actually, from a design point of view, I think they're really simple and very, very good. You know, the stuff inside it, as you say, for hand painting, brilliant, very, very nice, a lot better than humble stuff. Um, but for airbrushing it, yeah, it's good luck. <laughs> I'll stick with me lacquers, thanks. But yeah. But generally, though, I have to say, from a design point of view, I really do like them. I think they're very, very clever. They are very good design. And they stack wearing... and they're yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're really good. I know um, Nathan, we have get Nathan back on. He has sprayed them and tried to spray mm -hmm. them and uh, persevered. But, yeah, I've never tried them, to be honest, so I can't comment. I, 
I have tried spraying, and to fair, it, it didn't come out too bad, to be honest with you. I've I tried spraying them before. Um, can't even remember what I thinned them with. It might have been water. I'll tell you what I thinned them with, and it worked quite well. Weirdly, it's Hannant's acrylic thinners. Right, yeah. Mm hmm. I've done it with theirs, and it does thin with that, because I sprayed an entire thing of all colours white. I did mm. it on a Hawkeye, uh, on a 48-scale resin Hawkeye before there was a kit of it available, and that's what I did. And it actually went down okay, and it covered, and it masked, and it was fine. No problems with it at all. I needed some white, and I was desperate, and that's all I could find in my town. It's so, weird, because the kit I, I sprayed uh, um, them on was also Hawkeye. Mm, there you go. It's for the um, Liberty Bell and the green bit on top. Yeah. And the colour they quoted was that, and yeah, sprayed the green bit on top of the dome with it. See, so they do have their, their little thing. But as I say, as far as acrylic paints go and stuff like that, if you like, you know, obviously we talk about model colours and stuff like that, but if you just wanted like basic colours for hand painting, they're very good for it. Yeah, they're just odd colours though, aren't they, as well in the range? It's really. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you just want like a black, a red, you know, yeah. your sort of primary colours, they are actually they're not bad for it. And as I say, readily available and normally in your high street, somebody sells them, you know, with their little rebels thing. So, well, they did. Oh, oh yeah, they did. When, when, when do you remember when we had high streets with shops and everything? Well, I'm, at, I'm, I'm actually thinking where we could get stuff out of the EU, mate. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> trust me, I'm sure Ravel will find a way of getting their products out. So. <laughs> Uh, I've always been under the impression, speaking of which, I am skipping some questions. It's nothing deliberately. It's just that we're trying to cover different topics. Uh, for some reason, I've always been under the impression that Rebel was kind of crap. Bad fitting, raised uh, detail, etc. Uh, have I been li uh, living in a lie or is it kind of true? Again, like we say with ICM, some of their stuff generally is crap. But actually, if you was to look back at all of them, they're not too bad, especially when you consider the price point. That's the thing, isn't it? And like we were saying, where's he going? Is he making a run for it? He's off. Oh, look, he's coming back with a Rebel kit. Oh, here he is. He's a Rado. So I'm building that at the moment. It's and really, really nice. nice. A, bit fla a bit flashy, but, you know. Hold on a minute, though. Right, let's let's just go back a f a, like half an hour or 20 minutes to the Catalina. Yes. Okay. Good kit. Ravel's kit. Yeah. Expensive to buy on second hand now. Yeah. Irado. Yeah. Give them away when it was in production. Yeah. I can't yeah. buy one for love and the money now, second hand, because they were going for stupid money. But also, so there's, a pattern, yeah, there's you... a pattern forming here. Yeah, but also, they actually do make some really good kits as well. Because yeah, obviously, over here, the Raphael is really nice. Yeah. Very nice yeah. kit. They're 190. Can see, I know I threw everything at that one and all the rest of it, so it is a little bit of a lie. But I have to say, that is a fantastic kit because it's a base. It's not the most detailed in the world, um, but from a fit point of view and everything else, it's great. And like, if you do something like I did with this one, I sort of threw an aftermarket engine at it, a load of photo etch, a load of resin, you know, and everything at it. It actually turns into something very, very nice at the end of it. You know, you end up with something that's going to load through with a nice picture. There we go. You know, something where that could be any other manufacturers. You wouldn't automatically think, oh, that's the Rebel one. Because, yeah. that, but it gives you from a point of view. What is that kit? Twenty five quid. The base one. Thirty. Yeah. 30, 30 quid. It's still it's still cheap it's for cheap what it is. For what it is, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I think it's a were... really nice, you know, what I call start off kit. And their Spitfire is really nice as well. That Mark One that they did. You know. Yeah. The, the Spitfire. Even them. Um, I know, obviously, the Tammy one's better, but for a budget, mm. like the Mustang and the Mark. Nine, yeah, yep. they're all right kits, aren't they? They all good yep. together. And the thing, the 30 second stuff to me is actually really quite good. What yeah. 109s are nice. Um, yeah, and some of the 70 second kits as well. The 70 second aircraft, if you go through, they've done some little gems, some really good, which is more for Nathan when he's on because he's more that scale, I suppose. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But their well, 30 yeah. second stuff, I think you've actually yeah. hit the head. I've built a lot of their 30 second stuff, but like they're, you know, with the. Uh, the 109, uh, the um, 262, really nice. Again, straightforward out of the box type thing. I added obviously bits into this one, but that's what I always say is nice with the Ravel stuff because it's quite a cheap kit from an overall point of view and you could you don't have to add all the stuff into it and you still end up with something that's really nice. You know, it's got a good shape to it and all the rest of it. 
you know? Yeah, well, I built the owl, didn't I? Yeah. Which is mm. upstairs. And obviously then you've got the um, Z Zuckimori one, which is God knows how much. Mm. And it's come out fine, to be honest. I've not added anything to it. I think it's straight out of the box. And it was, it, it you know, it looks like what it's supposed to. Yeah. So I think the problem is with Ravel is, is like we've figured all along, is he's rehashing old kits from God knows when and it's quite expensive. Yeah. Or obviously reboxing other people's kits. Yes. That you don't know who's the original manufacturer was because some yeah. of them are good don't get me wrong they've reboxed some really good stuff like we've said some as a stuff's been reboxed academy they've reboxed and god knows whoever else. icm they're reboxing at the minute hmm. it's just obviously then they've done some dogs that you don't know perhaps the not so seasoned modeler yes. would have no idea oh i like that i think i'll get that and it's a terrible kit and i yeah. think that's where perhaps they should be a bit more transparent and say original molds by yes yes x such and such instead of just you know like we technically don't we have a love-hate relationship with Ravel because some of their new stuff yeah. like their tornadoes and things like that are really really nice kits and all the rest yeah. of it but there they have got a habit of re-releasing crap for yeah. incredibly you know inflated prices that are more than what they were back in the day um you know and to be honest one of the my one from my personal i did the live show with the saturn five you know, which you've got this huge box. And when you open it, you get a tiny little bag and some plastic <laughs> sheets. And it's like 90 quid or whatever it was. And it was like, you've got to be joking. You know, it's like the, the freaking hell. But again, the price of it didn't reflect what was in the box. And that kit is, well, as we know, it got released just after the, the, the moon landed. And it was like, yeah. so the kit's yeah. very, very long in the tooth. You know, and you think yeah. they'd have had their money back from the molds and all the rest, but they're charging a new kit's price. You know, and that yeah. just didn't sit right with me. And they did it with that bike, wouldn't it, the other week? And it was like that bike was released in 1970-odd, that DTM, whatever it was. And it was yeah, like, yeah. Jesus so, Christ, you know? So Yeah, um, yeah I think that's the problem, isn't it? I think that's why we kind of bash them a little bit. Yeah, they do get that. a little It's not bit the of... fact, like the new stuff, like, so I bet this SR71 will be all right, be a nice yeah. kit. Yeah. Um, you know... And a few of the other stuff. I mean, the E-Type Jag, which I'm going to build for mm -hmm. the 60s one, looks yep. really nice, and I'm looking forward to starting it. So it's not, we won't build Ravel. It's not, we're completely against them at all, because obviously Andy's building the Arado, and mm. you say you've built a few, haven't you? So yeah. it's not that. It's just, yeah, some of the stuff doesn't sit right. No, no. Um, anybody built a classic airframe kit? Yes, I have. I've built the Blenny Mark One, which is in a cabinet outside. Mm -hmm. Have you built a classic airframes kit, Philip? I don't think I have. Oh, you need to. No, honestly. You I need to experience the classic airframes goodness. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't know whether I have or not. I've got the uh, gannet up there. C6 Sig, mate. You've missed the boat with that. You could have built that for this C6 yeah, Sig. You could have done that Choose for the C6. A Rado. You've got Choose six months. You've got loads of time. I know, but I've got to build the catapult for it as well. So. Fine. So you've got six months, you've got loads of time. <laughs> just um, just to thing then on classic airframes, it seems like I'm the only one who's built one here. Take your time, test fit, clean up, because they are short run and they've, they've, you've got resin parts. So, because he's got the Canberra T17, um, some of the fit can be a little bit, you know, kind of kind of a proper modeler's kit, a, mm. a builder's kit, I think they are. But they, what, they turn out all right. What Matt isn't telling you, it took him five years to build his, but. Not quite that long, I don't think, but it went, it got put away and got back out again. It's one of them in it for me. Looks nice, though, doesn't it? Does it nice. came out nice, and then obviously yeah. it's released there, so it's yeah. completely <laughs> been gazumped, to be honest. But it was the only one out for years, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And they've done some other interesting subjects, classic airframes that you've got, like the Gannet that Andy's got, um, an Anson in 48, for Hudson in 48, for Cambras, odd Cambras, and they've just some really, really nice unusual subjects hmm. did they do a wyvern did they do a wyvern in 48 classic airframes or was that somebody else i'm thinking i don't think they did now they did meteors didn't they and vampires yeah. trumpeter did the 48 scale wyvern didn't they yeah did two versions of it i think they did the s4 yeah and I think it, i'm thinking they're thinking the dynavec oh, yeah. back um hmm. I was okay. going to say, Michael's been stung because he's doing the the old Matchbox AD5, the 48 2C. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, you know what one is, don't you? Um, and that's that is old, isn't it? That's proper old. That one. That's like eighties, yeah. isn't it? Like seventies, eighties. That boxing. I don't know when the uh, Matchbox Forty Eight kits came out. That lit. But yeah, it's not great. But again, no one's done that kit since, have they? I don't think anyone's done eighty five. No, no. It's, for people who don't know, it's the Sky Raider two side by side seating yeah. thing, isn't it? But again, it's over that kit. So I think, I think there is one the uh, second one. There's a oh, cracking one of them that goes around the shows. I was talking to the chap. Um, yeah. He placed, placed everything on it, and that, that beautiful, beautiful mm. model that was. Mm. I was very happy when I started talking to him about it, and he was showing me all the upgrades he did on it. Mm. I say classic airframes have been out of production for ages. I don't actually know who's got the moulds. There was a rumour Special Lobby had got a few of the moulds. Um or the guy who owns classic airframes would let him special lobby do a few runs of certain kits. I don't know because, um, but yeah, you've got to look on sort of eBay secondhand shops if you can find them. Because I'll tell you what they did do as well, which is would have been thing. It was um, a defiant. They're defiant. Mr. Robinson, who's clearly working from home. He's clearly says, not working from home, is it? It says, says classic airframes did do a while and well remembered. Oh, right, OK. There you go. Well, I bet that's rock hard to get hold of then. Yeah. I bet he's got one in his stash screwed away in his loft. <laughs> <laughs> the guys are all in chat talking about how they started off, obviously, with Humbro. I think everybody did back in the day. US yeah. would have been testers and things like that, wasn't it? Yeah. So, and you sort of make your way through, and most of us left the hobby with that and then come back in and discover Tamiya guns. And then, obviously, yeah. from the 90s, well, late 90s onwards, there was the explosion in paint manufacturing, wasn't it? And everybody was doing it. And obviously, yeah. acrylics all came along there. Uh, oh, God. 1980, that AD5. Is that? Matt Potts original, yeah. Because mm. they had a C. What else did they do? C Sprite in 48? What else did they do? Trying to you think. Need, have you got your matchbox catalog out? I haven't got it here, I don't think. I think it's <laughs> no more upstairs. But uh, I'll have to have a look. But yeah, so they'll put up in chat anyway. They'll all be on it in a minute. <laughs> so, was just like, going back to chat, you know, the matchbox 48 kits, were they in collaboration with somebody else or were they their own? Because they were more 30 second, 70 second, and because it's they teamed up with AMT, didn't they? Are they AMT kit? I don't know. Originally. Yeah, I don't know that oh, history. A, a Fury jet they did. Ooh. Yeah, they did the Fury, wasn't it? Which was like an upgraded Sabre, wasn't it, for the Navy? Well, what, what thing is me is obviously Matchbox at the time was a, a British company mm. and all them are US subjects. Yeah. So surely they would have done a Spitfire in 48 for a... Mm, you would have thought, you know, yeah. Would be. So I'm just wondering if it was when they were with AMT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, AMT, there you go, look. God, I'm such a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Yeah, so they're original AMT kits. Oh. Somebody's just saying here, I don't know if you know, Matt, but the HE111 Revels new one, is that the uh, ICM kit? Yep. Yes. Yeah. I presume it is, but they did have their own, and their mm. own one was the they monogram. Did. Back in the day, the monogram That kit. was a really, really nice kit, but I think the new one is the ICM. Mm. Scale mates will tell you, or Andy will in a minute, or uh, well, food, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Um... I only thought Monogram did a Voodoo in 48. Before Kitty Hawk released this, AMT's never done one. I don't think AMT's yeah, done. I don't remember AMT doing one. It is the ICM kit. Mm. All right, here you go. There you go. All right. All right. That's a weird. I'm sure that was one of the few kits they bought out that was more expensive than the ICM one. Oh, cheaper on there, but because mm. that's the thing with Rebel when they rebox other other companies' kits, which they do fair often, you can guarantee it's like they've usually got nicer de decals, aren't they? So like a wider selection of decals, and also normally come at a lower price rate, price range than the. Yeah, but you get a better box, don't you, with RCM? You do get a better box with RCM. Proper box. Proper box, so yes. Yeah. yeah, Rebel ones are horrible. Right, just before we wrap up, this is quite an interesting one. Why do the likes of Tamiya stop producing kits such as the Sierra Cosworth, the RS500, 
uh, by many ridiculous prices. Now, what's that company in Europe which reboxes them under their own name? Domino. Domino, that was it. Couldn't think who it was. Yeah, they bought the Escort Cosworth, didn't they? Because they did the Cosworth, wasn't it? And the uh, RS500 and that was all redone by Domino, wasn't it? So it's like a... I don't know how they've even done it, but Domino are a very large company, aren't they, on the continent? Yeah, but thing you don't forget, that thing it didn't come out on, it came out under Bell Kits, it didn't come out under Tamiya, even though it was the Tamiya moulds, the uh, Cosa. Oh, right. It was Bell Kits, thingy by Domino. Mm. Not to do with Tamiya, I think it's licensing again, I think. Maybe. So what Somehow, I mean by that which... is that sometimes some of the companies, you know, Tamiya as well, seem to be shying away because of licensing costs. So that's why we think Tamiya's moved away from the Ferrari deal and things they've like that. They've got the Ford deal, though, haven't they? Because they've done the Mustang, they've so they've the got Mustang, Ford yeah. licensing. So, so why they don't, because they aren't they in the on about a new run of the Sierra coming back out at some point? The XR4i? Oh, I don't know. I thought it was. I'm sure I'm thinking somewhere that the XR4i's coming back out from somewhere or other. Hmm. Perhaps I dreamt it, I don't know. I suppose you've got to think, though, they, they're old moulds and they're old cars, so mm. they've got to think of the interest of will they actually sell if they do a run, do you know what I mean? Yes. I don't know. Especially it's with the guys... funny, the Sierra, because that's our era, really, isn't it? So it's in that niche type of it's more is modern day now, classic. Isn't it? Hey, it's more is era well, than Well, it now. is era, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, fine. Yeah, I mean, I can, yeah. I, one, of friends, one of my friends bought a um, Sierra Cosworth, well, his dad bought a Sierra Cosworth. <coughs> Swapped his um, Lotus Esprit Turbo. As you would. Sierra Cosworth, as you would. <laughs> I must admit, my friend had a very nice one until it decided to throw a piston through the side of the engine block. India. <laughs> Depends, I suppose, which part of the world you are, Richard, if for the interest in the classic car world. But, mm. you know, I don't know, just, just from our point of view, who stock cars and sell them, they're definitely not a massive seller compared to armour and aircraft. So, yeah. One of the guys in YouTube chat was asking if um, anyone's ever built any MPM kits. Who? MPM. MPM. Yes, I've actually I've got done a few sci-fi type things. Isn't it? MPM. Did it was sci-fi? MPM. Oh, sorry. Are yeah, you what thinking... am I thinking of? I'm thinking of. Um... Say what you. You're thinking of the other one. Yeah. Oh, MPM part of special are they? Was it's not now. They've split. MPC. Uh... I'm thinking of. Sorry. <laughs> <Not much. laughs> MPC. Yeah. <laughs> No, MPM did like, I've got the HE177 in 48, yeah. but they did 70 second stuff. And I'll tell you, they did things for Phil. Yeah. X kit. Yes. Yeah. All oh, right. So there you go. Uh, one of the guys just here is asking about, uh, sorry, I've sort of lost you now, but you were saying about you're new to the hobby, you've just found us, and you're working on a Sunderland. Um, I've just read it somewhere. I can't see it now. Anyway, he's all about photo etch. If you go onto uh, the Flory site, these are all free. You don't have to pay for any of these. Uh, and then obviously, if you just pop into, um, I think it's under here, actually, under quick tutorials. So if you just click in here, there's all the free videos. And then we've got ones on all bits and pieces down in here. And you can obviously see these. The bite-sized ones are about 30 minutes and they cover, well, as you can see, all these different areas. Okay, right the way through. But we have got one on photo etch as well. So it's using photo etch in all these different areas. So you, that's probably the easiest way than try and explain it um, down in here. Or have a look at any of the three uh, video builds. They've all got photo etch in them as well. But uh, if you haven't seen the Bite Size series, that's something I was working on pre-COVID. And then COVID killed it. So I was doing one of these a month. And then it sort of killed it off. But we've got all the different things down in there. About glues, decaline, priming. And again, I will work my way through and oils and yes. And all of those, you can see all of them down there. But I've got one on photo etch as well. And don't ask about soldering it because we never did that bit. But uh, mm. yes, there's a, a little video all down in there. You can watch it full screen and all the rest of it, but it's a lot easier than trying to explain it here. And if you go to the top of the page, you'll find a link to somewhere where you can buy all your modeling supplies and kits from. You can. Is it at the top of that page? It's at the top of every page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Shameless uh, plug. Do, 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 do. Gonna need a good folding tool. No, you don't. Don't don't believe all of that. All you need is actually a flat pair of pliers. Or, or hold on. I was given these the other day by the other half because they're pink. These are really good actually. They're completely polished flat on the inside. All right. But they've got a perfect jaw on them that bites as well. Apparently these are like a pound from some. I like the way somewhere. they're. Uh... Too girly for Tams, so she gives them to Phil. And yeah, Phil that's it. Clearly, she wants a black pair. But um, actually, it works great for photo etch versus which are my other ones, which you can actually buy a proper ones, which actually there's no difference whatsoever. In fact, these are better because these are square jawed. So, but yeah, you can do so much with those. Say the hold and folds. That's really getting technical in there. You can do everything with them. Or my bigger pair. I don't know where the bigger pair has gone. I find these little Tamia photo etch tweezers really mm. useful as well for doing this dead small stuff yeah they're yeah. nice and good, good hard quality things work well mm. Mm. Oh, yes. cool. oh right are we right. sort of done did then oh echo oh reverb echo, oh, echo. that was good right yes. look how old that video is playing up there look at my knife <laughs> my lord and look i'm using my orange scissors <laughs> It might be an older video, this one, just looking at this now. <laughs> might, to think might, want an update. might need an update of that version, clearly. So, uh, yeah. yeah, might be. If you look at the backdrop in that video compared to now, it's like, Jesus. <laughs> Not day, isn't it? Anyway, uh, there we go. So that is us for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow at 2 o'clock, we've got the PM show, which I can do your shameless little plug thing here. So we've got the PM store over in here. It's got all your various things, including all your tools. Where's the tool set? You're going to throw me now. Including uh, uh, bending tools. There we go. Look, I'm your bending tools. You've got the big mm. ones in. No, I don't get the big ones because I think they're rubbish. Oh, yeah, right. they don't line up properly. They don't line up. They, they warp All and right. just no clues. That's where you need these. <laughs> we need to yeah. get these from wherever these games are. Yeah, and place probably, that yeah. Uh, but yes, so you get all that. But anyway, we'll be on with you at two o'clock. So obviously we've got the PM store. So we'll be talking about all things PM in there as well. And then obviously we might get on with some normal stuff as well. And I'll re answer your questions. Obviously we're doing the COVID shows right the way through until, well, probably not until we're all fine and been vaccinated. But obviously for the next couple of weeks, we'll be with you doing some live stuff in the afternoon, apart from Thursdays. And then on Thursdays, obviously we've got the Thursday night show with you at 7.30 till nine. So if you want to join us for that one, it'd be lovely to have you on. Again, not this weekend, following week weekend we've got a weekend full of activities for you for our virtual <laughs> model show so we'll be demoing and again we've got all the specials special show prices stuff like that so heavily discounted hits sundries and all your bits and pieces on as we make our way through with that one so yes lovely job don't forget to like and subscribe didn't say that the other night we we're on uh, the other lot oh, with facebook oh, yeah well Cool. Not know. going on there again. That caused chaos, didn't it? Apart from we did have 12,000 <laughs> people watch it, which is a lot more than we get on here. So everyone's saying about, oh, I never go on that part. I'm sure I wouldn't sign up to that. They, you know, you have to give them a kidney. Apparently everyone's on there. So, <laughs> yes, definitely. Anyway, good job. Well done, everybody. We will see you all tomorrow. So happy modeling. Take care. And we'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye. 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 There we go.